Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host, with another marvelous video. Invincible introduces a diverse and captivating bunch of characters that enrich its storyline. At the core of the story is a young hero discovering his superhuman abilities and undergoing a transformative journey. Supporting characters play a significant role, within a conflict and moral choices significantly shaping the narrative. Their complex character arc represents the exploration of good and evil within this world. In this episode, we're going to look into how the story is enriched by a range of fellow heroes, each with their unique powers and responsibilities, adding dynamic interactions and shedding light on the challenges of wielding superhuman abilities. Invincible excels in character development, providing a portrayal of characters with various powers, relationships and ethical dilemmas. Are you ready to explore everyone there is in the Invincible universe? <laughs> Let's do this. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Thrag. Thrag, born amidst the fires of destiny, was basically the universe's golden child. Trained in the fine art of butt-kicking and genetically engineered to be the ultimate Viltramite powerhouse, this guy was so tough that even the cosmos itself couldn't keep up. When the Viltramite Emperor Argol met his match in the form of Thedas, you better believe Thrag was front and center for all the cosmic fireworks. I mean, this guy's been around so long, he practically had a VIP suit at the Viltramite Civil War. And guess what? Thrag emerged from that celestial dust-up as the undisputed champ, the head honcho, the Grand Regent of the Viltramites. His mission? Find Argol's heir and keep the torch burning. Now, let's talk superpowers, because Thrag didn't just hit the gym, he practically invented it. Superhuman strength? Yeah. Viltramites make the Hulk look like a lightweight. <laughs> no joke. And speed? Forget about it. Viltramites zip around the galaxy faster than you can say warp speed. And as for stamina, they've got it for days. They can fight, fly, and do cosmic cartwheels without even breaking a sweat. And if all that wasn't enough, they hit the cosmic jackpot with decelerated aging. I mean, talk about winning the genetic lottery. Omni-Man Meet Nolan, better known as the one and only Omni-Man. His life story is more convoluted than a knot in a pretzel. Nolan the father of the renowned teen superhero Invincible is far from your typical dad. No, he's a Viltramite, which means he's loaded with more power than a rocket ship fueled by nuclear energy. But his journey is a roller coaster ride, from hero to supervillain, and then a complete U turn into redemption. Let's look at his superpowers, because this guy's a walking power pack. He's got strength that could lift a mountain, speed that would put a bullet to shame, and durability that makes titanium reinforced iPhones seem fragile. Oh, and he can soar through the skies faster than a jet fueled by Red Bull. Mm. When it comes to healing, Nolan's got it down to a science. Throw him into a brawl with fellow Viltramites like Thrag, Anissa, or the whole gang, and he'll bounce back from a beating quicker than you can say, ouch. Speaking of his DNA, Nolan's got some serious genetic mojo going on. When he gets busy and starts producing offspring, his genes take charge and rewrite whatever genetic tune is playing in the background. Now, let's chat about his interstellar adventures. Nolan isn't confined to Earth. He's got a cosmic passport that lets him zip through outer space in the blink of an eye. And if you're thinking he needs a spacesuit for these cosmic escapades, think again. Nolan's lung capacity would give Aquaman a run for his money. He can hold his breath for a staggering two weeks. Invincible Mark isn't your typical high schooler. No, he's packing a little something extra in the genetic department. You see? He's a unique Viltramite human blend, and that mix turns him into a real powerhouse. Thanks to his pops, Omni-Man, he's inherited some heavyweight superhero genes. Let's start with his incredible strength. We're not talking about bench-pressing weights. <laughs> We're talking about chucking million-ton golems past the moon like they're nothing but oversized baseballs. And he can even throw punches right there in the sun's scorching atmosphere. Yeah, you heard me correctly. It's like delivering a knockout blow with the force of a billion tanks. And while invincibility might not be officially his middle name, you get the picture. He's nearly indestructible. Mark's also got his own set of wings. Not literally, but you get the idea. He soars like an F-35 fast and sharp. And when it comes to speed, he's got it in spades. This guy can think, move, and react faster than you can imagine. It's as if he's living life in fast forward. But he manages to stay as cool as a cucumber. Here's a neat little nugget of knowledge. Mark might not be able to breathe in the vacuum of space, but he's got lungs like a fortress. He can hold his breath long enough to tango with baddies and zoom across the galaxy without needing a spacesuit. Looks like Dad's saving the White House. Alone? Guardians are there too. Who are they fighting? Oh. 
Deborah Grayson. Meet Deborah Grayson, a character with a story that could rival a mind-bending movie plot. She's not just any figure in Invincible. No, ah, she's the mother of Mark Grayson and the beloved partner of the cosmic superhero Omni-Man. Now, their first encounter? Well, uh, it's like a scene straight out of a romantic comedy. Omni-Man swoops in to save the day and, just like that, love ignites. Ah, and Debbie knew he was an alien. Talk about a love story that's written in the stars. But Debbie is more than just a mum and spouse to superheroes. She's got a touch of Lois Lane flair from the DC comics, always ready to unveil the hidden truths. In the comics, she battles her own personal demons, wrestling with addiction and depression triggered by her son Mark and husband Nolan's epic battles. In the show, she takes the investigative reins into her own hands, becoming a real-life superhero detective as she delves into the mystery of the Guardians of the Globe's murder. Conquest when Conquest rolled into town, it was like the universe cranked up the carnage to eleven. A face covered in scars and an arm that's more machine than man, and you've got yourself a one-man war machine. Now, Conquest wasn't just battle-hardened, he was practically a relic of the past. I'm talking older than Omni-Man himself, and that's saying something. With thousands of years under his belt, this guy was practically the Yoda of combat. He had a perfect record, he never lost a planet. So, when he decided to pay Earth a visit, he knew things were about to get messy. Conquest wasn't playing nice. He nearly turned Invincible into a pancake. It took Atom Eve going nuclear to even put a dent in this conqueror. <laughs> but guess what? Conquest wasn't done. The guy managed to bust out of a 400-ton metal prison, and before you knew it, he and Invincible were duking it out again. This time, Invincible was teetering on the edge of death for months. I mean, talk about a close call. In the end, Invincible managed to outsmart Conquest and come out on top. But let me tell you, it was a nail-biter. That battle could have easily gone the other way, and Earth might have had a new ruthless ruler. Battle Beast Battle Beast This guy's not your average space kitten. He's a towering, muscle-bound feline warrior with a lion's share of ferocity. Battle Beast lives for one thing and one thing only, epic battles. He's like a cosmic version of a thrill seeker, constantly on the hunt for opponents who can match his insane strength and skills. This relentless pursuit of combat leads him straight into the path of the Invincible and the new Guardians of the Globe. And let me tell you, he's not here to make friends. Battle Beast shows no mercy, no restraint, and he's not afraid to get a little, um, taste of victory, as he's been known to lick his lips in satisfaction after drawing blood from his opponents. Hmm, yikes. Speaking of superpowers, Battle Beast isn't just all brawn and no brains. He's got super strength that can give those Viltrumites a run for the money. And when he wheels that massive mace of his, it's like watching a wrecking ball in action. His fighting skills are so off the charts that he's practically addicted to brawling. And his speed and reflexes? Well, they're as lightning quick as your favorite superhero's costume change. Anissa. Meet Anissa, the Viltrumite with a mean left hook and a mission on Earth. Fresh from the Viltrumite Empire, Anissa lands on our blue planet with a serious agenda. She's here to see what our guy Mark, aka Invincible, has been up to in terms of Earth's future under Viltrumite rule. However, in Mark's laid-back hero fashion, he basically tells her that he's been slacking in that department. Anissa, not one to throw punches before trying diplomacy, decides to give reasoning a shot. She lays it out that the Viltrumite Empire could bring peace to Earth and share some fancy tech with us. Yeah, it sounds like a win-win, right? But alas, Mark isn't buying it, and he's not about to be swayed. So, what's a Viltrumite envoy to do? Well, she wastes no time unleashing her fury, delivering a superhero-sized beatdown that leaves Mark in a humongous crater. But Anissa's not done yet. She leaves Mark with a parting message giving him a heads up that another Viltrumite agent will return in the future to pass judgment. Hmm. Now, let's dive into her powers. Super strength? Yeah, you got it. Speed? Yeah, absolutely. Stamina to outlast even the most epic Marvel movie marathon? Yeah, huh? you better believe it. And everything else that a Viltrumite is gifted with. Angstrom Levy The man with an extraordinary talent for tearing through the fabric of reality itself, giving him access to an endless array of potential outcomes. In Angstrom Levy's wonderfully chaotic world, dimensions weren't just abstract concepts, they were actual portals. He could cherry-pick various scenarios, absorb knowledge like a human sponge, and even assemble a motley crew of alternate versions of friends and foes from different corners of the multiverse. However, as the saying goes, immense power comes with considerable, um, dimensional risks. You see, jumping between realities was akin to playing a game of dimensional roulette. You never knew where you'd end up. Sometimes it meant cozying up to a power-hungry dictator, tangling with extraterrestrials, or facing the ultimate cosmic barbecue as stars went supernova. So, what's a brilliant dimension-hopping savant to do? 
Levy had a cunning scheme. He reached out to the Mauler twins, a pair of intellectual whizzes known for their expertise in body swapping and cloning gadgets. Levy offered them a deal, a one-way ticket out of prison in exchange for devising a contraption to transfer the knowledge and experiences of his alternate selves into his own brain. Thule. Euler had a front-row seat when Thrag assumed the regent crown thousands of years ago. However, Euler wasn't just an observer on the sidelines. She was right there in the cosmic battleground, actively participating in the war against the coalition of planets. Euler and her fellow Viltramites decided they'd had their fill of Thrag's rule and orchestrated a coup, making Nolan the new Grand Regent. Fast forward to today, and Euler's not just a warrior, she's also a proud mother of two Viltramite half-breeds. When it comes to her incredible abilities, She's essentially a Viltramite powerhouse, boasting strength nearly on par with Omni-Man himself. She's like a one-woman Viltramite wrecking crew. Oh, and we can't forget her trusty ponytail knife. Hmm, it's like a versatile Swiss Army knife, always prepared for any interstellar adventures. Dinosaurus Meet Dinosaurus, the save-the-planet-at-any-cost villain in the wild world of Invincible. Dinosaurus isn't your typical villain with a bad attitude and a lair in some ominous cave. No, he's got a unique angle. He believes that us humans are trashing the planet faster than you can say climate change, and he's dead set on fixing it no matter what it takes. Dinosaurus isn't just your average eco-warrior. He's a temporal being with a knack for crashing the present through unwitting teenagers. His debut? Right after the Invincible War, when he decided to play party pooper by stopping Invincible and the gang from cleaning up the mess. He figured the world would be better off if it healed at its own pace, rather than a speedy recovery. After a quick tangle with Invincible, Dinosaurus reverted back into his teenage host. <laughs> and you know what? Invincible thought about going all villain prevention on the kid, but Robot stepped in to prevent that dark turn. Dinosaurus isn't just a preachy tree hugger. The guy's got some serious muscle to back up his beliefs. He's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Invincible himself, and even dished out a beatdown to the villain Omnipotus. His claws and teeth? Hmm, let's just say they can tear through concrete and steel like a hot knife through butter. Sequids. Sequids. They're these pink, squid-like creatures with not one, not two, but three tentacles and brains for heads. Yep, brains for heads. Now, you'd think they'd be content with their cosmic undersea adventures, but no. They're on a quest to turn worlds into chaos. So, these sequids, they've left a trail of destruction across the universe that's longer than the line at the DMV. Their last pit stop? Uh, Mars. But Mars wasn't too keen on being the next item on their menu. No. You see, these sequids have a knack for mind control, latching onto hosts and turning them into their marionettes. However, the Martians were like, <laughs> not today, space invaders. They had shape-shifting abilities that gave the sequids a run for the money, leaving them scattered and weak like a bunch of deflated party balloons. But then, Earth got in on the action. A team of astronauts, including our very own Invincible, blasted off to Mars. Now, I'm not saying Earth started it, but it sure didn't help. These sequids were like, hey, new hosts. And they jumped on the opportunity. What makes these sequids extra spooky is their hive mind mojo. When they possess a host, it's like they all join the same twisted telepathic group chat, and that's when things get really hairy. Without a host, they're like lost souls at a ghost convention, desperately searching for someone to take them in. The Immortal. He's been around for millennia, but because he's literally immortal. The only survivor of the original Guardians of the Globe, thanks to the Omni-Man's superheroic temper tantrum that ended in a not-so-super way for his fellow teammates. Millennia ago, there's this Celtic warrior minding his own business when he stumbles upon a strange spiral of energy. Now, most folks might have taken a step back and thought, hmm, maybe I should call the authorities. But not this guy. No, he goes full-on curiosity mode and reaches out to touch the thing. And bam! Uh, the anomaly zaps him with his cosmic mojo, making him the immortal. Now, let's talk superpowers. This dude's got him in spades. First off, superhuman strength. He once punched a Mauler twin so hard it caused a visible shockwave. And if you thought lifting groceries was a chore, <laughs> he casually tosses soldiers up into the air to safety, like their feathers in a pillow fight. Superhuman durability. He's tougher than a $2 steak on a grill in a heat wave. Bullets bounce off him like rubber balls, and you'd have better luck trying to dent a tank with a marshmallow. And just when you thought he couldn't get any cooler, he's got the power of flight, zooming through the skies at a cool Mach 3. Not bad for a guy who's seen more centuries than you have fingers. Alan, the alien, the ultimate cosmic underdog. Hailing from the Eunopian race, a bunch of aliens who have had it pretty rough at the hands of the Viltramites. Now, Alan wasn't exactly born with a silver spaceship in his crib. No, he came into this universe in a Eunopian breeding camp, all thanks to his people teetering on the brink of extinction thanks to those evil Viltramites. They didn't stop at bullying. 
They straight up demolished the Unopians' home planet when they couldn't add it to their empire. The Unopians weren't having any of that and decided to rebel against the big bad bullies. Alan's a brick-skinned humanoid with a head that's like a punk rock star. Spiky and one big eye that's probably seen more cosmic craziness than a Star Trek marathon. And speaking of battles, this guy's got some killer superpowers to boot. Superhuman strength? <laughs> you betcha. He smashed satellites and gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of Invincible. Superhuman durability? Check. And he's got all those other cool powers too. Super speed, flight, telepathy, healing and, oh, reactive adaptation. Atom Eve meets Samantha Eve Wilkins, better known as Atom Eve. When Samantha was born, her powers decided to make a grand entrance, with vibrant pink energy bursting forth as if she were auditioning for a rave party. Unfortunately, her mother didn't survive the childbirth process, hmm. but Samantha displayed her remarkable resilience, marking the beginning of her extraordinary journey. Fast forward a bit, and we see Samantha becoming a part of the teen team, a squad of young superheroes under the guidance of the ingenious Robot. They embarked on numerous battles against supervillains. During one of these heroic encounters, Samantha and her fellow teen team members cross paths with the charming teenage superhero Invincible, or Mark Grayson. Now, the heart of the matter, Samantha's superpowers. She's not your regular superhero. She wields the incredible ability of subatomic manipulation. By harnessing her sheer willpower, she can sense and manipulate matter and energy at the subatomic level. Whether it's organic or inorganic, she can shape it to her desires. It's like possessing a remote control for altering reality, and she's not one to shy away from using it. Samantha can transform her surroundings, conjure objects seemingly out of thin air, and perform a multitude of mind-bending feats that defy imagination. War Woman. War Woman. War Woman. She was the real deal. A bona fide superheroine and a proud member of the Guardians of the Globe. But, as they say, all heroes have their final curtain call, and hers came at the hands of Nolan Grayson, the Omni Man. War Woman wasn't just another pretty face in the superhero lineup. She had the skills and authority to boss around military soldiers during the Mauler Twins' White House shindig. And let's not forget her killer powers. First up, we've got flight. I mean, why deal with traffic when you can just take the express lane through the clouds? But that's just the tip of the superhero iceberg. Her body was tougher than a titanium-coated tank. High falls, high-caliber bullets, and impacts that would make a meteorite flinch. None of that scratched her superhero veneer. War Woman could move faster than a hiccup at a chilly cook-off, leaving mere mortals in the dust. And when it came to strength, she could pack a punch that could make the Mauler twins and even Omni-Man himself rethink their life choices. And because every superhero needs a signature weapon, she rocked a mace like it was a fashion accessory. It wasn't just for show. She knew how to use it, turning bad guys into cosmic pinatas with a swing and a smile. War Woman was a close-quarters combat pro. She had some fancy, unspecified fighting style. There was probably a mix of Bruce Lee and the Hulk. When War Woman stepped into the ring, you knew it was going to be a showstopper. Red Rush Joseph, also known as the Lightning Quick Red Rush, this Russian speedster wasn't just any member of the Guardians of the Globe. He was their go-to guy when it came to blink and you miss it superhero action. Red Rush wasn't just a flash in the pan. He was an original Guardian, and he'd even teamed up with Omni-Man before they discovered his villainous alter ego and had their lives turned upside down. Red Rush wasn't your average jogger. He had the superhuman power to dash across the city in the time it takes to microwave popcorn, all while leaving his wife standing there clueless. I mean, if I could do that, I'd get a lot more chores done around the house. But that's not all. Red Rush was built to last. He could withstand the kind of G-forces that would turn the average person into a human pancake. It's like running a marathon while dodging a tornado. Not something your everyday jogger can pull off. And when it came to seeing things, Red Rush was in a league of his own. He could spot trouble faster than anyone. He once saw Omni-Man coming for Immortal and swooped in like an eagle before everyone else could even blink. That's like having superhero radar in your eyeballs. And his agility is something straight out of the Olympics. This guy could pull off moves that would make a gymnast green with envy. Dodging Omni-Man's punches? Child's play, moving at supersonic speeds without tripping over his own speedy shoelaces. <laughs> Piece of cake. Black Samson. Black Samson, the unsung hero of the Guardians of the Globe. He's a bit like that old friend who left town but couldn't resist coming back. Black Samson wasn't just any member of the Guardians. He was there from the get-go, part of the OG squad. But then he had a little hiccup in the powers department and decided to take a hiatus from the hero biz. But you know how it goes. The superhero world has a way of pulling you back in. So 
Black Samson made a triumphant return and this time it was under the command of the one and only Robot. This guy's got superhuman strength that could put your average weightlifter to shame. He was tossing around debris like it was confetti at a parade after the showdown between Omni-Man and Invincible. I mean, who needs a forklift when you've got Black Samson? But it's not just about brute force. He's got some hand-to-hand -hand combat skills up his sleeve. Think of him as the ninja of the superhero world, throwing punches and kicks with the precision of a seasoned sushi chef. Darkwing. Darkwing, the masked marvel of the Guardians of the Globe. This guy was the real deal, a superhero who swooped in to save the day until his story took a tragic turn at the hands of the infamous Omni-Man. Darkwing wasn't just another member of the Guardians, he was the kind of hero who could make Gotham's finest look like rookie cops, if you know what I mean. He was there too when the Mauler twins attacked the White House, and boy, did he bring his A-game. He even tried to save a civilian from a falling tank, only to be rescued by Omni-Man himself. Darkwing had his share of run-ins with the baddies too. He once stopped a robbery with all the flair of a Hollywood action star. Just when he was getting cozy with the criminals for a little question and answer time, the emergency bat signal rang and the hero had to dash off. Now, let's talk about this guy's skills. Darkwing wasn't just a pretty face under the mask. He was a hand-to-hand -hand combat expert, the kind of fighter who could give even Batman a run for his money. And because every good superhero needs a gadget or two, Darkwing had an arsenal that would make James Bond jealous, or maybe Bruce Wayne. Magnetic handcuffs, a grapple gun, explosive devices, oh, and did I mention he had a hoverboard? <laughs> Darkwing was basically the Tony Stark of the superhero gang. During the showdown with Omni-Man, Darkwing tried to lay the smackdown on the superpowered behemoth. Unfortunately, Omni-Man had other plans and before you knew it, he grabbed Darkwing's ankle and gave him a one-way ticket to superhero heaven, slamming him to the ground. Bulletproof. Zandale Randolph, better known as the superhero Bulletproof or, for a brief shining moment, invincible when he filled in for Mark Grayson. This is a tale of twin brothers, science experiments gone haywire, and a hero who rose from the ashes. Zandale Randolph had a not-so-average start in life. He had a twin brother named Tyrone. Despite sharing identical DNA, Zandale's parents favoured Tyrone, who was all about science and big words. Meanwhile, Zandale was living the carefree life of an artist splashing paint on canvases and dreaming of a world beyond the brush. One fateful night, Tyrone pulled a real Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde move on his unsuspecting brother. He dragged Zandale and turned him into a guinea pig for a superpower experiment. Now, don't get me wrong, it worked like a charm, giving Zandale incredible powers, but it cost Tyrone his life. Zandale, now brimming with powers he never asked for, decided to put them to good use. He became Bulletproof, a superhero who was about as resilient as a tank made of rubber. His main superpower? Hmm, energy absorption. He could soak up kinetic energy like a sponge. Here's the best part. He didn't need to breathe or eat. Yeah, you heard that right. He could chill in space without an oxygen tank and his muscles were always beach ready, no matter how many burgers he devoured. And if that wasn't enough, he could fly at speeds that would make a jet plane look slow. And Bulletproof wasn't just limited to Earth. No. He could travel the stars, hopping from galaxy to galaxy like he was on a cosmic road trip. Martian Man. He hails from the distant world of Mars, where his people, a race of shape-shifting aliens, have their underground city nestled beneath the Martian surface. We don't know why Martian Man was exiled from his home world, but enough about his past, let's talk superhero debut. Martian Man made his grand entrance in the first episode, along with his fellow Guardian of the Globe comrades, when they swooped in to protect the President from a sudden Mauler twins attack. It was all action and excitement until Omni-Man pulled a fast one on them. <laughs> now, let's get to the good stuff. His powers. Being a true blue Martian, he's got some pretty nifty abilities. First up, we've got flight. <laughs> Obviously. Next is shapeshifting. Martian Man can bend and stretch like nobody's business, making him the ultimate contortionist superhero. He can rough around enemies like a boa constrictor, and even had the guts to try and bind Omni-Man himself. But of course, every hero's got their Achilles heel, and for Martian Man, it's his life force. You see, even when he's in shapeshifting mode, he's got a little central core hiding in there. Omni-Man saw that weak spot and ripped it out, bringing Martian Man's heroic journey to a tragic end. Green Ghost. Her origin story may be shrouded in secrecy, but her heroic journey is nothing short of extraordinary. By day, Alana was just your average photographer, snapping pictures and chasing the perfect shot. But her life took a supernatural twist when she got her hands on an amulet. When duty called, Alana wasted no time. In the midst of a photo session with a model, her wristband started flashing like a signal. She declared the shoot was over, faster than you can say, say cheese, and promptly swallowed that mysterious green amulet. As Green Ghost, she soared into action during an attack on the White House. Her powers were out of this world, literally. She could phase through solid objects like they were made of air, and she left behind a green energy contrail in her wake as she soared through the skies. She could brave extreme temperatures 
temperatures and even venture into the unforgiving vacuum of outer space. But her powers had a bit of a hiccup. You see, she could only make others intangible when she held on to them. And just when it seemed like she was on top of the world, tragedy struck. During her time at the Guardian's HQ, she met her untimely demise at the hands of the one and only Omni-Man. Aquarius. Aquarius, the hydrokinetic hero who's like Aquaman with a splash of extra aqua awesomeness. This aquatic wonder hailed from an undersea nation and was one of the original members of the legendary Guardians of the Globe. Aquarius didn't waste any time making a splashy entrance into the superhero scene. In the pilot episode, he and his Guardian buddies were called in to protect the POTUS from the Mauler twins who were causing quite a ruckus. When one of those Mauler twins tried to crash the White House like it was a cannonball contest, Aquarius teamed up with the ever-elusive Martian Man. They hurled an armored vehicle right at the twin, giving him a watery wallop and keeping the White House safe. With their aquatic heroics, Aquarius and Martian Man continued their mission inside the White House, splitting up to clear the area efficiently. With his marine physiology, he could withstand the crushing pressures of the deep sea, making him tougher than a titanium bathysphere. And yes, you guessed it, he could breathe underwater. But here's where things get really cool, hydrokinesis. Aquarius could summon, shape, and manipulate water with a flick of a wrist. It was like having the entire ocean in the palm of his hand, and he wasn't afraid to unleash it in powerful streams. Forget water guns, <laughs> this guy had a whole water cannon arsenal. Titan, Titan, the supervillain with a heart and a body of stone. He had a past that would make even the most hardened criminals think twice about crossing paths with him. Titan wasn't always a villain. He had a debt, a big one, to the crime lord extraordinaire, Machine Head. When he tried to shake off that debt like a dog with fleas, Machine Head said, <laughs> not so fast. So what does Titan do? He teams up with none other than Invincible and the Guardians of the Globe to take Machine Head down. And guess what? They actually pulled it off. Machine Head was defeated and Titan took over the organization like a supervillain boss. It's like Robin Hood stealing from the rich and becoming the new king of the forest. And Titan wasn't just your average guy with a rocky exterior. Uh -huh. He could encase his body in rock, making him the superhero equivalent of a walking boulder. Superhuman strength? Check. And his legs were like rockets, letting him leap through the sky to places unknown. That rock-hard shell of his made him practically immune to gunfire and the kind of pressure that would make a normal person crumble. But wait, there's more. Titan had stamina, endurance, and speed that could rival the fastest heroes out there. He might look like a boulder, but he moved like a rocket, and he wasn't slowing down for anyone. Robot. Rudolf Connors, the scientist superhero better known as Robot. Now, Robot's journey started back in the teen teen days, where he wasn't only the leader but also the resident genius. A group of young heroes battling other dimensional aliens called the Flaxons. And yeah, that's where they first crossed paths with Invincible. But here's where Robot's story gets interesting. Originally, he was a severely deformed human, crumpled up inside a liquid-filled pod with mechanical legs. To keep his true identity and appearance under wraps, Rudolf played the part of an actual AI. No emotions, just logical reasoning and a whole lot of brain power. Speaking of brain power, Rudolf Connors is basically the Einstein of the superhero world. His IQ is off the charts, and he's a mastermind in fields like engineering, weapon design, computer science, and tactical defense. But that's not all. He's also an engineering and robotics whiz, having created all kinds of nifty gadgets and mechanical marvels. If you need a robot buddy, he's got one in every shape and size. And let's not forget his tactical expertise. He's led not one but two superhero teams, Teen Team and the Guardians of the Globe. Thedas. Thedas, the stealthy Viltrumite who plays the role of a double agent, valiantly defending the universe against the oppression imposed by his own kind. Thedas serves as the brilliant mind behind the Coalition of Planets, an alliance of worlds united in their determination to confront the overbearing Viltrumites. However, beneath the facade of an intergalactic do-gooder, Thedas harbors a secret. He is, in fact, a Viltrumite himself, working covertly to safeguard the day. Now, at first glance, Thedas may appear as your typical hero of the cosmos, but concealed within that heroic exterior lies an array of Viltrumite powers that rival those of Omni-Man, complete with lung capacity, regenerative ability, and speed. And we can't overlook the classics, flight that enables him to gracefully navigate the cosmos. Oliver Grayson. Meet Oliver Grayson, or as many know him, Kid Omni-Man. Oliver happens to be the offspring of Nolan Grayson and Andressa. Our story begins when Invincible first encounters Oliver during his adventures on Thraxa. Oliver is a Thraxan Viltrumite hybrid, and that's like having an extensive array of superpowers at your disposal. His unique genetic blend has blessed him with an assortment of remarkable abilities. First off, there's his distinctive purple skin, a clear indicator of his mixed heritage. It results from his greater genetic compatibility with Viltrumites than with us humans. While he might not be 
be rapidly evolving into a powerhouse like his older brother Mark, due to his genes favoring the Viltrumite side, he's on an accelerated path to acquiring great strength. But thanks to his Thraxan lineage, Oliver possesses an incredible aptitude for enhanced learning, can absorb knowledge like a sponge and comprehend it in the blink of an eye. Oh, and speaking of being supercharged, Oliver takes self-sustenance to a whole new level. He can practically subsist off the cosmic energy grid, requiring far less sleep than the average person. General Craig General Craig, the Viltramite who came bearing a job offer for Invincible right here on Earth. General Craig, the Viltramite envoy with a knack for the dramatic, descends to Earth with a proposition in hand, but he doesn't exactly receive a red carpet welcome. Instead, he chooses to play it cool, patiently waiting on his spaceship as it orbits our blue planet. However, don't let his sideline stance fool you, this guy means business. In the grand pecking order of the Viltramite Empire, he's second in command, right behind the region. And General Craig too is equipped with a full Viltramite arsenal. We're talking about all the super bells and whistles. Strength, speed, durability, and stamina. Well, you get the idea. Lucan. Meet Lucan, the Viltramite who's been navigating the cosmos for a millennia. Lucan originates from the Viltrum homeworld and he's got the age to back it up. Thousands upon thousands of years old. Think of him as the Yoda of the Viltramite universe, but with way more muscle and a little less wisdom. Lucan is part of the Viltramite team that engaged in a cosmic showdown with Alan, known as the Alien. Let's just say they didn't exchange pleasantries and just leave it at that. Alan found himself adrift in space like a forgotten action figure, but that's not where the commotion ends. Lucan, along with two of his Viltramite comrades, paid a visit to Nolan, and things took a wild turn. They unleashed chaos across the skies, leaving turmoil in their wake. As the epic battle raged on, Lucan crossed paths with Mark in a cave and decided it was the perfect time to play the villain. He set his sights on Oliver Grayson, like a relentless predator, aiming to eliminate the next generation of heroes. However, being the heroic father that he is, Nolan stepped in to save the day. Now, Lucan's superpowers. Hmm, he's essentially a Viltramite amped up on steroids. Super strength? Hmm, check. Agility that would make even a ninja turn green with jealousy. <laughs> Absolutely. And in vulnerability? Well, he's basically a walking tank, just like Nolan. You know what I mean, right? Terra Grayson. Terra Grayson, the superhero whose powers are as mind-boggling as a time-traveling DeLorean. Terra's family lineage is nothing short of remarkable. She's the child of Samantha Eve Wilkins, a human possessing astonishing transmutation abilities, and Mark Grayson, the human Viltramite hybrid with a punch. Yeah, you heard that right. She's got some seriously superpowered genes coursing through her veins. Now, what could her powers be? Believe me, they're nothing short of otherworldly. She's not your regular superhero. Terra happens to be a human Viltramite hybrid, which is akin to having a cheat code. She Due to the shared biological traits between humans and Viltramites, Terra can tap into all those incredible Viltramite powers. But here's the real game changer. When Terra really pushes herself to the limit, she can crank up the superhero meter. This means she can become even faster, stronger, and more resilient than she was before. Ursal. Ursal, the Viltramite hybrid with powers and a sense of duty that would make any Viltramite beam with pride. She's the offspring of none other than the big boss himself, Grand Regent Thrag, and a Thraxan lady whose identity remains a mystery. While she undeniably possesses a hefty dose of Viltramite lineage, don't be quick to label her as just another member of the Thrag clan. Ursal is a breed apart, known for her practicality that could rival even the most battle-hardened warriors. One fateful day, Ursal bears witness to one of her numerous siblings going on a destructive rampage, subjecting the inhabitants of a freshly conquered planet to torment and massacre. However, this is where Ursal takes a stand. Her unwavering dedication and loyalty lie with the Viltramite Empire. She's the complete Viltramite package. Super strength, super speed, and everything else she can think of. But there's more to her than meets the eye. She possesses the adaptable intellect of a Thraxon, too. Alternate Invincibles The Alternate Mark Graysons These aren't your typical alternate universe heroes. We've got a mix of the good, the bad, and the downright ruthless. Now, some of these alternate Marks are as noble as apple pie on the 4th of July, with altruistic motives that would make Superman nod in approval, but most of them are about as friendly as a supervillain in a bad mood. They're dangerous, ruthless, and straight-up evil. Some of these evil Marks were raised to be bad apples, whether it was by their dads on Earth or some other cosmic overlord. For a bunch of these dark Invincibles, it wasn't just daddy issues that made them go to the dark side. No, it was Atom Eve getting hurt or killed that pushed them over the edge. And these alternate marks aren't slouches in the power department. They've got the whole package. Superhuman, speed and stamina and endurance that could outlast a marathon on a cosmic scale. Oh, and they can fly, travel the stars, hold their breath and shrug off bullets just like the OG Mark. Cecil Stedman. Cecil may not wear a cape, but he's as much a superhero as anyone in tights and a mask. He's the big boss at the Global Defense Agency, which basically means he's the guy who keeps the world safe from all things that go bump in the night. Now, the Guardians of the Globe, Earth's mightiest protectors, lying lifeless on the ground and next to them, a battered and bruised 
Omni-Man. It's a scene straight out of a murder mystery blockbuster. Cecil rolls in, ready to crack the case wide open. But what does he find? Omni-Man, the last person he'd expect, is the killer. Invisible agents swoop in, followed by paramedics who are so horrified they might as well have stumbled upon a horror movie set. They whisk Omni-Man away, but Cecil, well, he's not happy. He pounces his fist on the table in a fit of rage. But beneath that cold, authoritative exterior, Cecil's got a heart of gold. He cares, really cares about the people he's sworn to protect. And don't let that caring demeanor fool you. When it comes to the greater good, Cecil's not afraid to get his hands dirty. He's got investigation skills that would put Sherlock to shame and leadership that'll make Nick Fury salute. Monster Girl Amanda, aka Monster Girl, the newest addition to the Guardians of the Globe. Let's talk about Amanda's unique situation. She's got a bit of a supernatural hiccup in her physiology. You see, she can do this neat trick where she transforms from a regular, everyday human into a hulking, monstrous powerhouse. Every time she goes all monstrous, her body decides to play a little prank on her. It de-ages. So, while she might be a full-fledged 24-year-old adult on the inside, on the outside, she looks like a fresh-faced kid who just got her learner's permit. But don't let that youthful appearance fool you. When Amanda goes full monster mode, she's got a bag of tricks. First off, her regenerative healing factor is off the charts. And then there's her supernatural durability. Bullets bounce off her like they're made of rubber, and she can shrug off extreme temperatures, pressure, and even a blast from a flamethrower without breaking a sweat. But the real showstopper here is her supernatural strength. We're talking lifting more than 60 tons of pure muscle and monster might. And the best part, the bigger she gets, the stronger she becomes. Now, when it comes to fighting, Amanda's no slouch. She can hold her own in close combat, especially when she's up against someone like Rex Splode. As Monster Girl, she's all about instinct and brute force, but let's be real here. Facing off against a skilled warrior like Battle Beast, <laughs> that's like bringing a sledgehammer. Mauler Twins, the dynamic and slightly deranged criminal scientist duo of the invincible world. First things first, let's clear up the twin misconception, eh? Hmm, no, they're not actually twins. Instead, one of them is the real deal and the other is a clone, like a sci-fi insurance policy. Hmm, you see, they've got this rule. No one should know who's the original and who's the clone. Hmm, why? Well, because if a clone figures out it's the clone, things tend to get ugly. Imagine the clone discovers it's not the real deal. Cue existential crisis, jealousy, and before you know it, you've got a clone rebellion on your hands. So, to avoid all that drama, they keep it a secret from themselves. <laughs> Smart move, right? Physically, these guys are cut from the same mad scientist cloth. They're a couple of brawny bruisers with superhuman strength. I'm talking lifting solid metal objects bigger than themselves without breaking a sweat. These guys could bench press a semi-truck if they wanted to, but their strength is just the tip of the iceberg. These mad geniuses are also tough as nails. Bullets can't harm them. <laughs> and explosions? <laughs> They'll walk away without a scratch. Oh, and let's not forget their genius level intellect. These guys are no slouches when it comes to science, especially cloning. They can whip up a clone army or perform intricate surgeries with precision that's almost, dare I say it, surgical. Remember that time they stuffed Rex with a bunch of hazardous devices without leaving a single knife mark? Yeah, those Mauler twins are the real deal when it comes to mad science. Powerplex. Scott, the energy-absorbing superhero with a past shrouded in shadows. While we don't have the full scoop on his origin story, there are some tidbits to chew on. Seems like Scott hails from the good old US of A, and he had a sister who tragically bit the dust during Omni-Man's epic battle with his own son. Life took an interesting turn when he became a dad, having a child with a woman named Becky and eventually tying the knot with her. Scott's got some seriously shocking powers. His claim to fame is energy absorption. He can suck up the energy from objects, explosions, and even punches. Rex Blowed threw an accelerated baton at him once, and Scott just absorbed that energy like it was a mid day snack. He can also soak up kinetic energy. Invincible tried to give him a taste of his super-powered fists, but Scott handed it like a pro. Scott's got superhuman durability. Since he's busy hoarding all that energy, he can survive blows and explosions that would turn an average Joe into a crispy critter. Impressive, right? But that's not the end of his electrifying repertoire. Scott can whip up some electric blasts and even take to the skies by firing electric bolts into the ground. He's turning people into those things! I'm not turning people into anything. I'm fixing humanity's... D.A. Sinclair. D.A. Sinclair didn't just waltz into the world of brilliance. He earned his stripes at Upstate University, thanks to a special program that recognized his exceptional talents. This guy doesn't see human weaknesses as problems. He sees them as puzzles waiting to be solved through the power of engineering. You've got to admire that can-do attitude, right? But in Sinclair's tale, he's not just your average genius. No, he's a certified super genius. And even the likes of Robot himself have thrown some compliments his way when 
Cecil Stedman came knocking, Sinclair was the man for the job. What was the gig, you ask? Oh, just creating an army of Riani men. No biggie, right? Now, let's talk about his skill set. Sinclair's got mechanical engineering down to a science. Pun very much intended. He's the mastermind behind those Riani men. You know, the, uh, the folks who aren't exactly living, but aren't completely dead either. He's so good at his craft that he can whip up new Riani men from Viltramite corpses in just a few weeks. But, like all heroes and villains, Sinclair's got his Achilles heel. He might be a genius, but he's no fighter, and he's as human as the rest of us. So, don't expect him to throw punches, he'd rather stick to tinkering with his mechanical wonders. Machine Head. This metallic menace has his mechanical fingers in all sorts of illicit pies, and he's as mysterious as they come. First off, let's talk business. Machine Head runs a protection racket in the city that would make even the toughest gangsters quiver in their boots. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. He's also got his metal mitts deep in the drug trade, all while masquerading as a garbage disposal expert. Oh, and don't forget the building insurance fraud. He's got a knack for orchestrating accidents that magically qualify for insurance payouts. <laughs> Crafty, right? Machine Head, the master recruiter, managed to enlist Titan into his nefarious fold. And he didn't just ask nicely. No, he dropped some threats about Titan's family. So now our dear Titan is working for the metallic crime lord, whether he likes it or not. But let's not forget Machine Head's party trick, the quantum probabilities upgrade. Thanks to a little chip from Titan, this bionic baddie could see into the future. Uh, well, sort of. It was like having a glimpse into multiple potential outcomes, giving him a leg up in the planning department. But as you might have guessed, Cecil shut that party down real quick. When it comes to leadership, Machine Head knows how to crack the whip and keep his henchmen in line. He's got a knack for running his criminal empire like a well-oiled machine. <laughs> Pun intended. Lord Argol. Lord Argol, the heavyweight of the invincible cosmos. He's not just any old antagonist. He's the emperor of the Viltrum Empire, the patriarch of cosmic significance to Nolan, aka Omni-Man, and the cosmic forefather of Mark and Oliver Grayson. Lord Argol made his entrance into this world as part of the elite Viltrumite dynasty. And <laughs> let me tell you, their bloodline was so pure it made the regular Viltrumites look like amateurs. Let's delve into his superpowers because Lord Argol is armed with the full Viltrumite arsenal. We're talking superhuman strength, swiftness, and the gift of flight and, you know, the, the regular Viltramite stuff. Oh, and have I mentioned that Lord Argol and his lineage are supposedly as resilient to the lethal Scourge virus as a bank vault is to a drill? It's as if they have antivirus software embedded in their DNA. Omnipotus. Omnipotus makes his grand entrance in issue number 27 of the Invincible Comics. And boy, does he make an impression. He's all about that classic villain monologue, letting everyone know that he's a major threat to the world and the superhero should start trembling in their spandex. Hmm. When our cape crusaders decide to take him on, Omnipotus brushes them off like pesky gnats. He's convinced they're wasting their time and that surrendering to him is the logical choice. Hmm. Modesty isn't exactly his strong suit. Now, let's talk about the party tricks this buddy has up his sleeve. Energy absorption is his jam. He can suck up energy from his universe, and even Invincible's universe to power himself up. As for invulnerability, this guy might as well be made of steel. Multiple superheroes try to give him a run for his money, but Omnipotus just stands there, bored. Omnipotus can bend reality to his will, creating monstrous mayhem out of building rubble. Super strength? Huh, check. He can toss superheroes around like rag dolls and lift buildings like it's leg day at the gym. Oh, and let's not forget about super endurance. Omnipotus can take a beating from the best of them, even going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Invincible and Dinosaurus for a hot minute before meeting his end. Onan. Meet Onan, the Viltramite offspring who's essentially the ultimate fanboy of his dear old dad, Thrag. Onan finds himself a branch on Thrag's already extensive family tree, a result of his rather prolific escapades with Thrax and ladies. Hmm, it's a Viltramite dynasty overflowing with offspring, more than you can shake a lightsaber at. But what makes Onan truly unique among the superpowered crowd is his unwavering loyalty to Thrag, and this loyalty comes with a side of danger. Think of him as the Viltramite equivalent of an ardent Star Wars fan, but with the actual power to back up his enthusiasm. And yes, you guessed it right, he's packing that Filtramite power package, strength, interstellar flight, and everything else. Marcus Murphy, the superhero more famously known as Kid Invincible. Marcus's backstory is a whirlwind of Viltramite magnificence. It all commences with a Viltramite mother named Anissa and Mark Grayson himself. Although Marcus might carry a smidgen of human DNA, he's still armed with a full Viltramite power package. To begin, he's got flight. This kid can take to the skies like the Apollo 11, but that's just the tip of the beginning. Marcus is as tough as nails when it comes to invulnerability. I'm talking tougher than diamonds. Super strength? Yeah, oh, he's got it in spades. He could bench press a mountain if he set his mind to it, and don't even get me started on his longevity. Just like the rest of his Viltramite kin, Marcus has the keys to the Fountain of Youth. He'll be battling supervillains and acing his algebra homework for centuries to come, and his healing ability is off the charts. Now, 
Let's touch on his senses of adventure. Interstellar travel? Hmm, you bet your asteroid belt. Marcus can survive, maneuver, fly, and dispense justice in the frigid, starlit vacuum of space. And he doesn't even need a spacesuit. Plus, his aging process is in slow motion, all thanks to that potent Viltrumite DNA. As he gets older, he'll age at an increasingly glacial pace, potentially living for millennia while still sporting that superhero physique. Rexplode, a young Rex plucked from his destitute family by some shadowy organization. They whisked him away and gave him the power to turn molecules into ticking time bombs. Yeah, he's the human equivalent of a walking explosive, and it's as awesome and dangerous as it sounds. Now, fast forward a bit, and Rex decides to make a run for it. He escapes from the clutches of that shadowy organization and sets out to find his family. But guess what? Life has other plans. Turns out his family moved on and even had another kid. So, what's a guy with explosive powers and a heart full of questions to do? Join the teen team, of course. Rex becomes part of this superhero squad and brings his unique blend of charm to the table. And by charm, I mean he's rude, sassy, sarcastic, immature, and abrasive, especially to his so-called friends. Oh, fun fact, Rex Blood is like a comic book version of Gambit from Marvel's X-Men. You know, the guy who can charge stuff up and make it go boom. Yeah, that's Rex's jam. Duplicate. Duplicate. Duplicate, a superhero with a talent that's twice as nice. She sports a slick grey and black suit with a standout number one emblem. At the heart of Duplicate's power is the art of self-replication. With a simple thought and a dash of concentration, she can create identical copies of herself. It's like making a photocopy, but with a lot more kick. Her duplicates don't just magically appear out of thin air. No, they seem to split off from within her, which is a nifty trick in its own right. But there's a limit to her cloning powers. She can't bring into existence a whole army of duplicates all at once. No, it's one of the time. Now, the exact number of clones she can conjure up in a row without overloading her power? Well, that's still a mystery, but you can bet it's impressive. And each of Duplicate's clones is like a separate individual. They've got their own thoughts, feelings, and even their own to-do lists. But don't think they're completely on their own. There's a telepathic link that keeps them connected from the moment they pop into existence until they're absorbed back into Kate. The agility... Shrinking Ray. Shrinking Ray, the superheroine who joined the ranks of the new Guardians of the Globe following the devastating slaughter of the original team. But what sets Shrinking Ray apart from the rest? Personal size manipulation, size reduction. Ray possesses the incredible power to alter her size at will, and she can do it in the blink of an eye. Whether she needs to become as tiny as a doll, a small child, or even an ant, Ray can shrink herself to fit the situation. There's just one little catch. She can't go bigger than her regular size. Further, she's got escapology. With her remarkable size, shifting abilities, Ray can slip out of the tightest spots and make a quick getaway, even when things seem impossible. And like any respectable hero, Ray is no slouch when it comes to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. She's more than capable of holding her own in battles, delivering justice with her own fists, albeit tiny ones sometimes. Thanks to her unique power, Ray is a master of stealth and espionage. Whether she needs to sneak into enemy territory or gather crucial intel, her shrinking ability makes her an ace at going unnoticed. Hmm. Here's a fun fact, in the comics, this character is male, whereas in the television series, the character takes on a female persona. Shrinking Ray proves that heroes come in all shapes, sizes, and even genders. Reaniman. Reaniman, the brainchild of the twisted scientist D.A. Sinclair. These poor souls were once ordinary humans, but Sinclair's sinister experiments transformed them into mechanical, zombie-like creatures under his sinister control. In their chilling debut, Sinclair brought four Reaniman to life. The first of these gruesome creations faced off against Invincible himself, and it put up quite the fight. Just when it seemed like victory was within its grasp, Invincible managed to knock off its helmet, revealing the horrifying truth beneath. Confronted by the ghastly reality of what they'd become, the Cyborg couldn't bear it any longer, and descended into a depressive madness, ultimately ending its own existence. But these Reanimen aren't just tragic figures, they pack quite a punch. Sinclair granted them insane strength, making them a true evil force, especially when taking on someone as powerful as Invincible. These mechanical abominations boast enhanced durability, rendering them highly resistant to damage. They can withstand quite the beating, which is bad news for anyone trying to take them down, and speed is on their side, allowing them to move swiftly and catch their foes off guard. When facing Reanimen, you'll need more than just brawn to outmaneuver them.
Brit. In the years leading up to World War I, there was a man named Brittany, but folks just called him Brit. His life was as ordinary as can be, until one fateful day when tragedy struck. Brit and his mother found themselves in a horrific accident that left Brit critically injured and his mother tragically taken from him. Now, Brit's father, Brittany Sr., was away when this calamity unfolded. When he returned and learned of the heartbreaking fate that had befallen his family, it hit him like a freight train. He fell into a deep and bewildering state of shock. For weeks, he remained in this emotional abyss, but eventually, Brit Brittany Sr. emerged from the shadows of grief, determined that he would never allow the loss of a loved one to darken their lives again. With unwavering resolve, both Brittany Sr. and Junior embarked on a journey that would take them to the farthest reaches of the earth in search of something Brittany Sr. believed they would need. Now, we're not completely sure how they managed to pull it off, but they sure did. This guy is the definition of invulnerable. No damage, no bleeding, no lost limbs can touch him. He's impervious to any attack or disease that dares to cross his path. Thanks to his invulnerability, Brit can tap into 100% of his muscle power, making him insanely strong. Brit ages at a snail's pace compared to regular humans. His lightning-quick reaction time matches his enhanced strength. He can casually snatch bullets out of the air with his bare hands. No sweat and no harm done. Yeti, a fresh new hero all the way from Nepal, the land of the Himalayas, where the air is thin and the mountains are towering. This hero goes by the name Yeti, and he's not your average newcomer to the superhero scene. Brit, the guardian of the Guardians of the Globe, saw something special in him and recruited him to join their elite team. But Yeti's tenure with the Guardians was shorter than a snowflake's lifespan in summer. Why? Hmm, because his father showed up on his doorstep looking for his pint-sized hero and dropped a bombshell. Yeti was no grown-up, he was a mere 12-year-old Jotun. Brit had to make the tough call and gave Gave Yeti the boot from the team. After all, there's an age requirement, and being a pre-teen giant didn't quite meet it. But Brit later had a change of heart, realizing that some of their previous recruits weren't exactly setting the world on fire. So he asked Yeti to return to the team with his parents' blessing. Now let's talk about the powers of this frosty hero. Yeti's got some seriously sharp claws. They're not just for show, they can slice through pretty much anything that gets in his way. While we're not sure just how strong this Himalayan hero can get, we do know he once arm wrestled Black Samson and came out on top. Yeti's tough as nails, or should we say, tough as ice. He can take a beating and keep on trucking, and when he does take a hit, yet his body knows how to bounce back in a hurry. Kaboomerang. In the heart of the Australian outback, a young man's journey to becoming Kaboomerang began. Raised among a native tribe, he soaked up the wisdom of the land and honed his skills. But that's not where his story gets interesting. It's when he discovered his unique psionic gift that things really took off. Nobody knows just how long he trained in the vast expanse of the outback before he decided to suit up, but when he did, he caught the eye of the guardians of the globe. Before long, he was a local legend, known far and wide for his daring adventures in the rugged Australian wilderness. Now, let's talk about what makes Kaboomerang tick. He's what you might call a low-level psionic, but don't let that fool you. His telekinetic gift is a bit like a boomerang itself. It always comes back, but with a twist. He can't exactly lift a car with his mind, but he's a wizard manipulating smaller objects, especially the ones he throws. A boomerang hurls an object from his hand, and just when you think you've dodged it, his telekinetic mojo kicks in. Suddenly, that projectile takes on a mind of its own, darting and dancing its way toward the target like a mischievous spirit. A boomerang is as agile as a kangaroo, as nimble as a wallaby, and a martial arts master to boot. When it comes to hurling things, <laughs> particularly his trusty boomerang, Boomerangs, he's practically a living legend. Outrun. In the heart of South Africa, Outrun was already a sensation, a popular heroine with a trail of admirers. So, when the prestigious Guardians of the Globe extended an invitation her way, she accepted with the same lightning-fast decisiveness that defined her life. But as the saying goes, with great power comes great. Well, yeah, you know the drill. It didn't take long for Outrun to find herself in a high-speed showdown with the cunning villainess, Embrace. Now, Embrace had a knack for slipping into other people's skin, literally. She could possess their bodies and dance to her sinister tune. In a devious twist, Embrace took control of Outrun's body, infiltrating the very team that had welcomed her. She became the eyes and ears of the Nefarious Order, a villainous organization with a thirst for secrets. Now, here's what makes Outrun the speedster she is. This gal can move at superhuman speeds for jaw-dropping distances. Her entire body is built for high speed, and she handles it like a pro. But it's not just about the velocity, it's her lightning-quick reaction time that sets her apart. Outrun's senses are dialed up to superhuman levels, allowing her to make split-second decisions while she's a blur of motion. As for her top speed, it remains a bit of a mystery, but let's just say she's covered vast distances in the blink of an eye. We're talking running from Los Angeles to Utah or dashing from New York to Iowa in mere seconds. She can even skim across the Atlantic Ocean with a velocity that'd make any speedboat jealous.
Shapesmith. Shapesmith, a peculiar and mysterious alien champion, he shares his stage with none other than the illustrious Invincible, making his debut appearance back in 2004. Imagine Shapesmith as a delightful cocktail mixing the zany essence of DC's Plastic Man with just a dash of the stoic Martian Manhunter. Now, if you're trying to get a read on Shapesmith's personality, eh, good luck with that. This shapeshifting hero is a bit of a mystery. Sometimes he exudes the aura of a battled hardened warrior, the kind you'd want to stand shoulder to shoulder with in the face of danger. Other times, he's a large than life figure who dives into chaos with a carefree grin, as if the devil himself couldn't phase him. But what really sets Shapesmith apart is his bag of tricks. First off, we've got the superhuman strength, and while the exact limits of his muscle power remain a mystery, he's got no trouble hoisting at least 800 pounds straight over his head. That's one strong alien, no doubt. Then comes the real showstopper, his psionic mastery over the very molecules that make up his body. With this unparalleled control, he can transform himself into a chameleon, stretching his form like a rubber band. Charles play. Need some extra limbs or claws for a specific situation? <laughs> He's got that covered too. And don't even get me started on his shape-shifting prowess. He can mimic the appearance of pretty much anything. Humans, humanoids, animals, you name it, he can become it. All with a mere thought. El Chupacabra. Francisco Vasquez, or as the superhero world knows him, El Chupacabra. This guy was the cream of the crop when it came to Mexican superheroes for years. A real shining star. But then, the second incarnation of the Guardians of the Globe had a wild idea. They wanted to expand their roster. Cecil, the man in charge, trusted Francisco, thinking he'd rise above his troubles and return to his heroic glory days. So, he popped the question, asked him to join the Guardians, and with not much left to hold on to in his life, Francisco agreed. Now, about that name, El Chupacabra. It's like something out of a cryptid nightmare, right? It's named after that legendary blood-sucking creature from folktales, the stuff of cryptozoological dreams or maybe nightmares in Spanish-speaking Americas. El Chupacabra has a nifty little trick. He can turn his fingertips into some seriously sharp and tough claws. We're talking Wolverine-level sharpness here. <sighs> Nobody's really sure just how durable those claws are, but they can cut through flesh and bone like a hot knife through butter. No sweat for Chupacabra. But he's more than just pointy fingers. This guy's a seasoned hero, the full package. He's got the acrobatics down pat can deduce like Sherlock Holmes on a good day, and when it comes to a good old brawl, he's got melee combat skills that'd make Batman proud. Tracking? <laughs> oh, he's a master. You can throw him in the middle of nowhere, give him next to no clues, and he'll still track his prey for miles. Best Tiger The Guardians of the Globe noticed Best Tiger during their global recruitment effort aiming to assemble a diverse and multinational team of heroes. A character who's like the ultimate mashup of Asian action cinema legends, it's like they took the blind swordsman archetype straight out of a Japanese flick, threw in some Chow Yun fat style gun opera swagger, and sprinkled in a pinch of those superhuman gunfighters you'd find in Filipino action blockbusters. Meet Best Tiger, a walking arsenal of marksman mastery. When it comes to hitting the bullseye, this guy's on a whole different level. We're talking unerring accuracy, the kind that tiptoes on the line between human and superhuman. Best Tiger can blast a target no matter how small with a precision that's practically otherworldly. He's pulled off shots in the heat of battle while he's on the move, and even with two guns aimed at two different targets. Heck, there was this one time he took down a whole dozen baddies with a single bullet that bounced around like a ricochet wizard. Best Tiger's got this mysterious knack for sensing what's happening around him, even when he's got a blindfold on. It's like he's tapped into some cosmic awareness, knowing exactly what's going down in his immediate vicinity. And you better believe he puts that sixth sense to good use when he's squeezing off shots. Knockout. Once upon a time in the vast comic book universe, there was a character named Knockout. Now, her story didn't start with a big bang, but in a teeny tiny Image Comics miniseries back in 2003, fittingly titled Capes. It was like the prologue to a blockbuster movie that was yet to come. Fast forward a few years and guess what? Knockout and a crew of Capes characters make their grand return, but this time they stepped into the Invincible universe. You see, that new book was a hit, and it was like the ultimate crossover event. She wasn't just your average Jane. No, she was a capable pugilist. She'd been schooled in the art of American-style boxing, which means she knew how to throw a punch or two. And as if that wasn't impressive enough, her adventures as a guardian opened her eyes to all sorts of crazy environments. When Earth found itself under attack by a gang of invincible clones from another dimension, Knockout and her Cape Sync crew decided to answer the call to arms. But reality check, those extra-dimensional Viltramite youths were packing some serious heat. It was like bringing a rubber mallet to a sledgehammer fight. Japan Droid. Japan Droid had carved a name into the annals of Japanese superhero history, and it wasn't long before the Guardians of the Globe came knocking on her high tech door, extending an offer she couldn't refuse. But let's talk about her prowess, shall we? In her everyday form, Japan Droid boasts strength that defies the laws of physics for someone her size. A pint sized powerhouse that can go toe to toe with opponents, packing a little extra oomph in the strength department. The exact extent of her might remains a mystery, but trust us, it's impressive. Now, Japan Droid isn't just about 
about brute force. She's got some nifty tricks up her metallic sleeve. You see, her artificial body isn't flesh and bone, it's way tougher. Japandroid has this amazing ability to shapeshift and reconfigure herself, kind of like a high-tech transformer. This means she can morph into different forms and gain new super abilities on the fly. Furthermore, Japandroid's noggin is like a supercomputer on steroids. It processes information at lightning speed with pinpoint accuracy. And what's even cooler is that she uses this brain power to upgrade the tech around her, turning everyday gadgets into futuristic marvels. Lethan. He's currently holding the title of King of Atlantis, but it wasn't always this way. He's actually the successor to another waterlogged hero named Aquarius. Now, Aquarius had a pretty rough go of it. He and the rest of the Guardians of the Globe met their unfortunate demise early on in Season 1 of the series. But in the comics, there's this quirky Atlantean law that says if you off an Atlantean husband, you're on the hook to marry his widow. And guess who was stuck with this aquatic conundrum? Mark, also known as Invincible. So, off Mark goes to Atlantis, where he's set to marry Aquaria, the widow in question. And guess who's there to meet him? Lethan. Now, Lethan's not exactly thrilled about this whole situation. I mean, who would be, right? He's been looking after Aquaria for ages and suddenly an air breather shows up, ready to take her hand in marriage. Looks like Lethan's got a little crush on Aquaria himself. William Clockwell. The man who keeps our superhero Mark, aka Invincible, tethered to reality. Now, Will might not have any superpowers himself, but he's the guy who helps Mark stay down to earth. Quite literally. Mark is soaring through the skies, breaking the sound barrier and saving the world. Meanwhile, William is the voice of reason, the guy who's not afraid to ask Mark to swing by downtown for a quick flight or casually lift his car out of an impound lot. But it doesn't stop there. Mark's super speed makes getting takeout from that incredible sushi joint in Tokyo a piece of cake. William gets the best of both worlds, incredible super-powered adventures and some seriously delicious sushi. Amber Bennett. She's not just your typical high school sweetheart. She's a strong, opinionated and self-proclaimed feminist who's all about making a difference in the world, especially when it comes to helping the homeless. Amber's not one to shy away from a good debate on social justice and politics, and she's got her sights set on a bright future in college. With her quick wit and friendly demeanor, she caught Mark's eye after he stood up to the school bully Todd on her behalf. In fact, she was so taken by Mark's chivalry that she pulled off a little manipulation of her own, coaxing Todd into handing over her phone number. Now, as much as Amber cares for Mark, she's not one to tolerate being ghosted on the dates or being fed a pack of lies about where he's been. She's looking for Mark to reciprocate the interest and compassion she's pouring into their relationship. When those white lies and broken promises pile up, Amber's had enough and decides to call it quits. But as fate would have it, she's not alone in being deceived and she's there to comfort Mark when the truth comes out. Amber Bennett, a powerhouse of a character who's not afraid to stand up for what she believes in and expects honesty in return. Donald Ferguson. Meet Donald Ferguson, the right-hand man to none other than Cecil Stedman himself. Not just your average assistant, Donald is the guy who keeps the gears turning, the guardians of the globe in check, and serves as a loyal agent of the Global Defense Agency. His first appearance, Donald and Cecil, standing side by side, surveying the grim scene of the fallen guardians of the globe. It's clear from the get-go that he's a key player in this world. Now, in the original comics, Donald was no ordinary human. No, he was a cyborg and a pretty nifty one at that. Imagine a body that's 98% mechanical. Yep, you read that right. His arms, well, they're not just for show. Donald can morph them into all sorts of things, including an impressive array of firearms. Need some firepower? He's got it covered. His arms double as energy projectors, blasting enemies with powerful energy beams. Oh, and did I mention he can fly? Yeah, this guy's got it all. Superhuman durability, flight, and enough firepower to make Iron Man a tad envious. In the comics, Donald had his share of adventures and storylines. What about his fate in the series? Well, that's a bit of a mystery. Despite meeting his end, there's a glimmer of hope that we haven't seen the last of him, especially given his appearance in the Season 2 key art. Some might even draw parallels between Donald and Agent Coulson from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Art Art Rosenbaum, the unsung hero of the superhero world. See, Art's day job is all about threads and fabrics as a top-notch suit tailor. But he's not just any tailor, he's the genius behind some of the most iconic costumes in the Invincible universe. You see, Art doesn't just sew sharp suits, he's the go-to designer for our favourite heroes, and he's not one to spill the beans about his secret costume side gig. No, this talented tailor knows how to keep a secret as snug as a well-fitted suit. First up on Art's client list, none other than Omni-Man himself, Nolan Grayson. When he first crossed paths with Nolan, Art whipped up a costume fit for a superhero, because when you're saving the world, you've got to look good doing it. But Art's design talents didn't stop there. He also worked his magic on Nolan's son, the one and only Invincible. 
You've seen that iconic costume, right? Hmm, well, you can thank Art for that sleek and super look, and let's not forget about the other Cape Crusaders in town. Art's needle and thread of fashion costumes for the likes of Rexplode, Oliver Grayson, and even Gary Hampton. Magmaniac. Meet Magmaniac. The fiery force of nature who's not just another bodyguard. No, nope. he's the guy you call when you need someone to turn up the heat and keep those heroes at bay. You see, Magmaniac used to work as Machine Head's personal muscle. When the going got tough and Machine Head needed some muscle power, he'd summon this lava-loving powerhouse to get the job done. But Magmaniac's moment in the spotlight came when Isotope called him into action to take on none other than Invincible himself. And boy, did Magmaniac bring the heat. With his magma powers, he gave Invincible a burning run for his money, even managing to melt Titan's rock-hard skin. Teen Team rolled into the scene, and Magmaniac wasn't backing down. He took on Monster Girl, trying to turn her monster form into a crispy critter while trading blows with Rexplode. But every hero or villain in this case has their weakness. Magmaniac's fiery reign came to an explosive end when Shrinking Ray decided to go big from the inside, causing him to erupt like a volcano. Man Kong Man Kong, with his gorilla physiology in full swing, was all set for the pre-selection showdown to join the prestigious ranks of the new Guardians of the Globe. It was going to be a battle of epic proportions. His opponent, none other than Shrinking Ray, the master of miniaturization. As Man Kong swung into action, he lunged at Ray with all his might, ready to land a crushing blow. But Ray, being the crafty little dynamo that she is, used her powers to dodge his attacks with finesse. Man Kong wasn't about to give up that easily. He swung again, determined to land a hit. But Ray, quick as a mouse, shrank down and sought refuge in the cozy confines of Man Kong's fair. Ray, now hidden away in the depths of Man Kong's ears, decided it was time to pull off a move that would leave her adversary dumbfounded. And the icing on the cake? When Robot finally unveiled the new Guardians of the Globe, Man Kong didn't make the cut. It seems his gorilla physiology wasn't enough to swing him into superhero stardom. Rick Sheridan it all started with a not-so-friendly abduction by D.A. Sinclair. Poor Rick found himself in the clutches of this mad scientist and was subjected to a transformation that turned him into one of Sinclair's infamous Rianne men. But our trusty hero, Invincible, swooped in to save the day. With the help of the Global Defense Agency, they managed to restore Rick's battered body. You'd think that'd be the end of the story, right? Well, not quite. Enter William, Mark's best friend, who was absolutely livid with Mark for not showing enough care and concern for Rick during his ordeal. He was fuming. But it turns out, there was more to this story than met the eye. After Rick's rescue, he decided to bunk up with William, and as it turns out, these two gentlemen had more in common than just being roommates. They both came out of the closet and revealed that they were, in fact, gay. Love knows no bounds, even in the world of superheroes. Now, let's not forget the cherry on top of this superhero Sunday. Rick Sheridan's name and his peculiar sleeping habits are a nod to Marvel Comics, specifically to Richard Sheridan, the partner of Sleepwalker another worldly hero who springs into action when Richard sleeps. Tech Jacket Meet Zack Thompson, the average teenager whose life takes a turn when he crosses paths with Kelda, a dying alien from the advanced yet physically frail Geldarian race. Kelda's spaceship is on the brink of self-destruction, and in a last-ditch effort to ensure her legacy lives on, her tech jacket transfers to Zack. Now, our young Zack is the proud owner of this incredible piece of alien technology, but he can't take it off. And just like that, Zack is thrust into the role of a superhero, armed with the extraordinary powers of the Tech Jacket. At first, the Geldarians aren't too sure about Zack and his newfound abilities, but he quickly proves his worth by helping them face off against their long-standing foes, the Crash. Grateful for Zack's assistance, the Geldarians offer him something priceless in return, training. They're not just handing out super suits willy-nilly, you know. Zack accepts their offer and becomes even more powerful thanks to some upgrades from the Colossal. Here's Tech Jacket's bag of tricks. Zack can shoot powerful energy beams, fly through the skies and the stars, and even brush off attacks like their mere mosquito bites. Invulnerability, baby. He's got super agility, stamina, and reflexes to boot. This nifty suit also takes care of Zack's personal hygiene by automatically scrubbing away germs and dirt. <laughs> no need for showers, and it even keeps him clean shaven. Uh. As far as Zack's concerned, he just can't grow facial hair. Who knew a super suit could be so handy in the grooming department? Damien Darkblood Meet Damien Darkblood, the demon detective with a knack for uncovering the supernatural secrets of the Global Defense Agency. A red-skinned, pot-bellied gumshoe with a moderately long tail, standing at an average human height. Now, Darkblood might not win any beauty contests, but what he lacks in looks, he makes up for in stoicism. This demon detective is about as emotionally expressive as a brick wall. 
often delivering his words in a monotone, hoarse voice that could send shivers down your spine. When he talks, it's all business and he doesn't mince words. Some might say he's a bit harsh and off-putting, but hey, that's just Damien being Damien. You see, Damien Dogblood isn't your average detective. He claims that the nuances of human speech are lost on him, and he's not too concerned about sugarcoating things. But don't let that fool you. He's one sharp demon. First on his list of supernatural talents is teleportation. Damien can pop up anywhere he pleases, no matter how secure the location might be. The only heads up you'll get is a sudden chill in the air, cold enough to make your breath fog. Darkblood's got a nifty trick up his tail, psychometry. Give this demon a piece of evidence or scrap from a crime scene and he'll start channeling his inner Sherlock. He can see how the victim met their untimely demise, but don't expect him to name the perp. That's a puzzle you'll have to solve on your own. And of course, Damien's got that classic detective intuition. He can walk into a crime scene and size it up like a pro, piecing together the clues with ease. But every demon has their kryptonite, and Damien's weakness is no secret. A simple exorcism ritual can send him packing back to the fiery depths of hell. Kid Thor Back in the Viking Age, there was a Scandinavian blacksmith who was so skilled at his craft that he became a legend among his people. And he soon caught the eye of none other than Thor, the god of thunder himself. You see, Thor had a little mishap involving his beloved hammer, Mjolnir, thanks to one of Loki's classic schemes. So he turned to this remarkable blacksmith with a special request, forge him a new hammer, one worthy of a god. And let me tell you, this blacksmith didn't disappoint. He crafted a hammer that left Thor utterly impressed, a weapon of divine power that he wielded in battles with thunderous might. Thor didn't just return the hammer to the blacksmith, he did something even more extraordinary. He infused it with the power of the gods, a gift for the blacksmith's bloodline to cherish for generations to come. As the sands of time flowed, the blacksmith had a son of his own and he passed the enchanted hammer down to him. And the tradition continued from generation to generation, each son receiving the hammer from his father. Thus, a lineage of mighty warriors wielding this divine weapon was born. And finally, the hammer found its way into the hands of a young man known simply as Kid Thor. Its size allowed Kid Thor to take on enemies much larger than himself, and it had a special trick up its handle, the power to resurrect its wielder if they ever met an untimely demise. Space Racer Meet Space Racer, an extraterrestrial with a gun that's not just a pew-pew blaster. His weapon fires these unbreakable blasts that'll pierce through just about anything. And guess what? Only he can pull the trigger. Those blasts? They're like kryptonite for Viltrumites, taking them down like a stack of dominoes. But you can't just swipe his gun and go all pew-pew with it. Mm, oh no, that gun has a mind of its own. If you try to snatch it, that blaster will zing right back into Space Racer's hands like a yo-yo. Now, why is he called Space Racer, you ask? Well, he's not just about blasting things. He's got this slick hover bike that he cruises around on. A century or so ago, our pal Nolan Grayson had a little tussle with Space Racer among the asteroids. It got so intense that Space Racer ended up buried under a mountain of space rocks. That's when he dropped his trusty gun and Nolan, being the clever guy he is, left it there on purpose. See, he didn't want that gun flying back to Space Racer, giving him a chance to blast his way out of trouble. Bolt Bolt, the guy who got zapped by a lightning bolt and turned into a walking powerhouse. Lightning didn't give him any cool Thunder-themed powers, but it did grant him some serious muscle and durability upgrades. Now, before you start asking why there's not a lot to talk about when it comes to Bolt, let me drop a little knowledge on you. See, Bolt and his fellow capes from that miniseries are internationally designed to be kinda generic and derivative. They're like your standard superhero templates, and sometimes a story needs these everyday hero types in the background. You know, the ones who swoop in to clean up the mess, or maybe they get mind-controlled by the bad guy. They serve their purpose. Now, let's talk about Bolt's superpowers. He's got superhuman strength and durability, which is pretty darn impressive, but there aren't many benchmarks to measure just how strong and tough he is. But Bolt's not just brawn and no brain. No, he's got experience, smarts, and confidence to boot. When it comes to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, he's no slouch either. He's got a knack for throwing down and taking on the bad guys toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And if he finds himself in a tight spot, he's got a knack for pulling off some pretty slick tricks to outmaneuver his opponents. Tellia General Tellia, a decorated big shot from the Coalition of Planets. They say she's got a zero-tolerance policy when it comes to Viltrumites. And as for her private life, well, she's keeping that under wraps for now. General Tellia is set to play a role in the upcoming second season of Invincible. And trust me, it's gonna be a big one. We've all been waiting patiently, or, or not so patiently, for this season. And it's finally hitting Prime Video on November the 3rd. But hey, that's not all. 
If you're as excited as I am, you'll want to keep an eye out for the invincible presence at New York Comic Con. They're bound to drop some hints, spill the beans, or maybe even give us a sneak peek of what General Talia is all about and how she's going to shake things up for our boy, Mark Grayson. Russ Livingston So, Russ was doing this NASA thing on a mission to Mars, thinking it was all about science and exploration. Little did he know, it was a PR stunt, but then things took a wild turn when he and his crew got captured by some Martians. These Martians thought Earth was going to invade their turf, so they had execution on their minds. Yikes, but our hero Invincible swooped in to save the day. Or so we thought. You see, Russ had a little switcheroo pulled on him. A Martian took his place, playing the part of Russ, and they left Russ with a little souvenir, the Sequids. Those slimy little guys took over Russ, and let's just say they're not the friendliest bunch. Now, Russ might not have any super strength or crazy powers, but he's as fit as a fiddle from all that astronaut training. He's just a regular guy caught up in an intergalactic mess. Le Brusier. Le Brusier. The French sensation of the superhero world. Le Brusier is one extraordinary bulldog with a flair for the heroic. Now, where did this canine champion come from? Well, that's a bit of a mystery. But who cares about her origin story when you've got a bulldog with super strength, speed, and durability on your hands? <laughs> she's not just any bulldog. She's a powerhouse with a bark that could knock a supervillain off their feet. But what really sets Le Brusier apart is her unique partnership with a fellow heroine, Pegasus. You see... Pegasus has this uncanny ability to understand Le Brusier's barking. Now, that's some next-level teamwork. Le Brusier doesn't stop at being a barking bulldog. She's got super hearing and a nose that can sniff out trouble from a mile away. And let's not forget her invulnerability. She's tougher than a $2 steak. When it's time to put the pedal to the metal, Le Brusier cranks up her super speed and flexes her super strength. Doc Seismic Doc Seismic the not-so-impressive villain with a knack for causing chaos and craving the spotlight. He's not exactly the A-list villain in the superhero world. And let me tell you, this guy had one big ego. He found excitement in challenging heroes and enjoying the fame and power that accompanied it. One day, he cooked up a scheme to obliterate the iconic Mount Rushmore. That's when he ran into Invincible, the hero who would make or break his lackluster career. Their showdown was a clash of egos, with Doc Seismic refusing to be outdone by this unknown hero. Their battle reached its climax when both of them tumbled into a deep crevasse. Invincible, being the hero he is, tried to save Doc Seismic from certain doom. But Doc Seismic had other plans. He'd rather plummet to his doom than admit defeat at the hands of an unknown hero. In one last act of defiance, he unleashed a seismic shockwave that sent Invincible flying, leaving him with no choice but to let the villain meet his doom. Now, let's talk about Doc Seismic's signature move, those nifty gauntlets. When he slaps those bad boys together... They create a wave of energy that messes with the molecular stability of anything inorganic. Wolfman, CEO Gary Hampton. Just an ordinary guy on a family vacation when suddenly, out of the blue, he's mauled by a werewolf. But instead of wallowing in his lousy luck, Gary decides to flip the script and use his new furry moonlit curse for the forces of good. And so, the astounding Wolfman is born. When the moon shines high and Gary goes full werewolf, he's a supernatural powerhouse. His senses go through the roof making him the ultimate detective. He's got superhuman strength that lets him lift a cool ton straight over his head. Thanks to some rigorous training, Gary's got this transformation thing down pat. But Gary's not just relying on his fur and fangs. He's got a nifty suit to go along with his wolfy ways. A sleek black spandex with a bulletproof chess piece that's got this Thundercat-inspired wolf symbol. His gauntlets come decked out with lunar energy absorbing discs, ensuring he can wolf out even past bedtime. And let's not forget his armored boots toes cut out for those wicked claws on his feet. Oh, but here's the catch. Silver is Gary's kryptonite. That's right, even a hint of silver can bring this wolfy wonder to his knees. Monax. Monax Exile. The offspring of Amanda and Zal Exile had quite the tumultuous start in life. Robot, not exactly winning the Dad of the Year award, attempted to off both Monax and his mum. Tragically, Monax had to bear witness to his mother's untimely demise when he was just a kid. Monax, not one to let bygones be bygones, made his way to Earth with a singular mission, revenge. And here's a scoop on his powers. Think superhuman strength. This guy can lift and toss heavy stuff like it's no big deal. Superhuman speed? Eh, yeah, he's got that too. It's like he's got his own personal fast-forward button. And his dense tissue makes him pretty much indestructible. And if he ever gets a scratch, no worries, because his accelerated healing kicks in to patch him up in no time. King Lizard King Lizard, the mastermind, keeps his origins shrouded in mystery. But here's what we do know. 
He's the head honcho of the Lizard League, and he's got a look that screams genetic mutant. This kingpin runs a criminal empire teeming with thousands of blindly loyal minions and henchmen. The Lizard League isn't your typical gang. It's more like a reptilian pyramid scheme. The higher-ups call the shots and the lower-downs do their bidding without question. At the very top of this pecking order sits the one and only King Lizard, pulling all the strings. What makes this guy so dangerous, you ask? Well, aside from his knack for getting folks to do his dirty work, he's no slouch in the brains department. He's got a brilliant mind, a deep understanding of cutting-edge tech and weapons, and he's not too shabby in hand-to-hand -hand combat either. King Lizard stands tall as a master of manipulation and strategy. Betsy Wilkins Meet Elizabeth Betsy Wilkins, the loving adoptive mom of none other than Samantha Eve Wilkins, better known as the superhero Atom Eve. Now, Betsy's got a bit of a different take on her daughter's superhero gig compared to her hubby. While her husband might be all about worrying that Eve's cape crusading is a one-way ticket to danger, Betsy's a bit more pragmatic. She figures as long as Eve's got the likes of Rex and other superheroes watching her back, the risk isn't as bad as it seems. She's not quite as tough on the whole using her powers or not acting like a regular kid front as her other half. Sure, she might have her moments when she wonders why Eve's flying off without a word, but all in all, Betsy's the kind of mum who's just looking out for her daughter, superhero or not. Thresher now, when it comes to Thresher and her species, the comics don't exactly reveal their official name, but these folks sport some pretty unique looks. They've got that green and white skin combo, and if you take a gander at the features, you might notice a sharkish vibe. Sharp teeth and claws? <laughs> you betcha. And they're all bipedal. Thresher's backstory is a real doozy. You see, her people were living under the boot of summer presses, and along comes the battle beast. How does he handle the situation? Well, let's just say he takes a slash first, ask questions later approach. He pretty much wipes the floor with anyone who dares to challenge him on their planet, and that's when Thresher enters the picture. She's not exactly thrilled about the whole situation, but hey, desperate times call for desperate measures. Hmm. Thresher ends up teeming with Battle Beast. As for powers, you've got your standard claws, durability to take a hit, and a serious dose of super strength. In fact, Russia managed to do something no other female in her species could make Battle Beast bleed. Mr. Liu, Mr. Liu, the supervillain and all around crime lord. The guy's got a pretty wild trick. He can transform into a full blown dragon. Imagine a picturesque date in the heart of Rome with none other than Debbie Grayson and Omni Man. But just when you thought it was all gelato and ancient ruins, in swoops Mr. Liu in his dragon form, causing all sorts of chaos. Debbie turns to Omni Man for help, but what does he say? I'm on vacation. Let Cecil Steadman earn his paycheck. Ouch. Tough love, Omni Man. Well, the military rolls in, firing missiles at Liu like it's a fireworks show gone wrong. But this dragon means business. Fast forward a bit, and we catch another glimpse of Mr. Liu, this time in a little conversation with Titan and Isotope. <laughs> and you guessed it, he transforms into that fearsome dragon form again. Let's talk powers. Shapeshifting. Check. This guy can go from human to dragon and back in an instant. Fire breath? Oh yeah, he's got that too. His fiery breath can turn buildings into crispy critters in no time. Flight? Eh, you betcha. Soaring through the skies like a real dragon should. And let's not forget durability. To withstand all those missiles, you'd better believe he's got some seriously tough skin. Angel Murphy Angel here is the daughter of the one and only Jennifer Murphy, and her stepdad is none other than the dragon himself. And there's not one, but two angels in town. The first angel, hailing from the Image universe, goes by the name Smasher. And number two, who's straight out of the Savage World universe. But she's not exactly the friendly hero type. She's got an evil streak a mile wide, and she's taken up residence in the ominous-sounding Dimension X. So what's in Angel's superhero toolkit? Hmm, superhuman strength, for starters. This gal could probably bench press a semi-truck. And if that's not enough, her skin might as well be made of vibranium or something, because it's virtually impenetrable. Bullets bounce off her like rubber balls at a carnival game. Elephant, a regular Joe minding his own business, when suddenly he's gifted with superhuman strength and a synthetic hide bonded to his flesh. How did it happen, you ask? Well, that's the million dollar question. Now, our man Elephant has got a bit of a knack for the whole criminal gig. Over the years, Elephant's rap sheet grew longer than a CVS receipt. He'd pull jobs solo, team up with other ne'er-do-wells, and even play the role of a henchman from time to time. But he crossed paths with none other than the Invincible himself. Now, you'd think a guy with super strength and a synthetic hide would put up a decent fight, right? Wrong. Invincible made quick work of Elephant, and the tough-talking villain found himself on the wrong end of justice. He ended up behind bars in a federal penitentiary for super-powered criminals. Now, as for Elephant's powers, it's a bit of a mixed bag. He's got enhanced physical strength, 
Densler body mass had an impressive resistance to physical injury, and he's got increased stamina and supercharged healing abilities as well. This guy is practically a walking tank. But here's the best one. Rumor has it, Elephant might have a photographic memory. You know, the kind of memory where you can recall every detail, from the color of your second grade teacher's shoes to what you had for breakfast on a random Tuesday five years ago. April Howsam. April, the tutor with a job that's out of this world, literally. You see, April's not your regular educator. She's been assigned a mission, helping Invincible's alien half-brother, Oliver, adapt to life here on Earth. April's no rookie to this gig, though. She's got a resume that includes tutoring superpowered youngsters. You name it, she's seen it. Kids who can fly, kids who can shoot lasers from their eyes, uh, you get the picture. So, when it comes to Oliver, she's like, eh, this one's not the weirdest I've dealt with. In a world where aliens, superheroes, and supervillains are all part of the daily grind, April's got a front row seat to the extraordinary. But hey, someone's got to teach these otherworldly beings the ABCs of fitting in on good old Earth. Adam Wilkins. Meet Adam Wilkins the concerned dad in the world of superheroes. He's not your average pops. His daughter is Atom Eve, the superhero extraordinaire. Now here's the twist. While most parents might be over the moon about their kids' superpowered exploits, Adam's not exactly throwing a victory parade. Nope, he's got some serious reservations about his daughter's chosen career path. In his eyes, this whole superhero gig is not just dangerous, it's downright foolish. He's the kind of dad who's constantly worried about his little girl getting into scrapes with supervillains, facing world-ending threats, or just generally putting herself in harm's way. But you know how it goes in the world of capes and masks. Not everyone gets to choose their family's profession. So, while Adam might not be thrilled about his daughter's line of work, he's doing his best to support her, even if it means biting his nails every time she heads out on a mission. After all, being a superhero parent isn't for the faint of heart. multi -Paul. In ancient China, a time of emperors and epic curses, we've got an emperor. Let's call him the OG Emperor. And he's got a bone to pick with his usurper, the warlord, Feng Cha. Just moments before his royal demise, the emperor lays down a doozy of a curse. The seventh generation after Cha's seventh grandchild would be burdened with a family too large to care for, and it would drive him mad. Now, fast forward a few centuries and we've got ourselves the appointed grandchild. The poor guy has twins, Paul and Kate. Seems harmless, right? Hmm, wrong. These kids have inherited the family curse and, as toddlers, they start multiplying like rabbits. Dad, who goes by Sing Cha, goes bonkers trying to keep up with this ever-expanding brood. But here's where it gets interesting. When Paul and Kate hit puberty, they gain some control over their powers. Now, they can whip up duplicates at will. That's right, these two can make copies of themselves whenever they fancy. And in the world of superheroes and supervillains, you can bet that kind of power comes in handy. So, let's talk about Paul. He's the younger twin, and he's made a name for himself as Multi-Paul, the supervillain. But hey, the reasons behind his stint in the slammer? Well, those remain a mystery, buried deep within the annals of comic book lore. All we know is when it comes to duplicating, Paul's got it down pat, and that's no small feat. Throw Bolt. Meet Throw Bolt, the electrifying superhero with a jolt of enthusiasm. She's the kind of hero who's always ready to charge into action. She was seen at a big pre-selection event for the new Guardians of the Globe. Throw Bolt's there, all fired up and eager to snag a spot on the team. She's got a sight set on joining the ranks of the best, but to prove herself, Throw Bolt's got to go head to head with Black Samson, a seasoned hero with some serious flying skills. Throwbolt wastes no time and starts hurling electric bolts at Black Samson, who's zipping around like a jetpack-wearing speedster. Her bolts strike true and take out Samson's jetpack, bringing him back down to Earth, literally. But don't count Samson out just yet. He closes in on Throwbolt and lands a mighty punch right in a kisser, sending her sprawling. After the fight, as the dust settles, Black Samson extends a hand to help Throwbolt up. But when the new Guardians of the Globe are announced, Throwbolt doesn't quite make the cut. It's a tough break for our electrifying heroine, but hey... Sometimes you've got to keep pushing forward in the world of capes and costumes. Val. Once upon a time, there were two pals named Val and Samantha. These two tops were inseparable, and the favorite meeting spot was a cozy little treehouse where they chat about everything under the sun, often in the daring format of truth or dare. Fast forward a few years, and life took an unexpected turn. Samantha, now a student at a fancy private school, discovered something extraordinary about herself. Superpowers. She could rearrange molecules, reshape reality, and do all sorts of mind-bending stuff. Excited to share her newfound abilities, Samantha approached Val, hoping to blow her mind with the wonders of the superworld. But Val's reaction was far from what Samantha expected. 
She thought the whole idea was downright bonkers, believing that regular fogs didn't go around rearranging molecules. Their friendship, once as solid as the treehouse they used to climb, began to crumble. Val distanced herself from Samantha and her extraordinary adventures, even when Samantha called out to her as she hopped off a bus. Val shot her a look of distrust, keeping her distance from the supernatural whirlwind that had become Samantha's life. Hail Mary A colossal kaiju named Hail Mary, a force of nature that once went head-to-head -head with the legendary Omni-Man. This gargantuan behemoth, with dimensions that would make skyscrapers blush, posed a challenge to even the mightiest of heroes. After suffering defeat in her initial tussle with Omni-Man, Hail Mary found herself in the clutches of none other than Cecil Stedman and the GDA, Global Defense Agency. They saw potential in this monstrous force and decided to give her an upgrade. Now, Hail Mary boasts a terrifying visage. Her head is a nightmarish sight shrouded in a tangle of yellow tentacles that conceal her gaping maw. Beneath those tentacles lurks rows of teeth, large, rectangular ones backed by a multitude of smaller, razor-sharp fangs. As suspicions grew regarding Omni-Man's true motives, Cecil Stedman decided it was time to unleash Hail Mary once more. She proved to be a relentless adversary, taking on Omni-Man, but our heroes couldn't stand idly by. Invincible himself, Mark flew to the rescue, adding his might to the fray. Ultimately, it was Mark who found the path to victory using cunning and creativity to triumph over sheer brute force. Unopians In a distant world known as Unopa, a once thriving planet that met its doom at the merciless hands of the Viltrum Empire. You see, Unopians are unmistakable with their vibrant orange skin, single eye, and an intriguing trio of fingers on each hand. It's like they're walking, talking works of art. And speaking of their name, Unopan derives from the Spanish word uno, which means one. Why, you ask? Well, because every Unopan is proudly sporting a single eye. But let's get back to the real meat of the story. The Viltrum Empire set its sights on the Unopians' homeworld, Unopa. You know how empires can be, always looking to expand. Well, the Viltrumites took their expansion quite seriously, and they decided to pay a not-so-friendly visit to Unopa. Things took a dark turn, as the Viltrumites launched a full-scale attack. And let's just say that the planet's fate was sealed when the Unopians decided to stand up to these cosmic bullies. The Viltrumites didn't take kindly to that rebellion, and in their usual fashion, they unleashed devastation upon Unopa, obliterating the entire world. Poof, just like that. Now, with their beloved planet reduced to cosmic dust, the Unopians found themselves facing an existential crisis. They were forced to establish breeding camps to ensure the survival of their unique species. B.N. Winslow You see, our story begins at Reginald Vell Johnson High School, where B.N. Winslow reigns supreme as the principal. And let me tell you, the character is the mother of all Easter eggs. Now, as you avid fans of Invincible already know, the show has been all about Mark Grayson's early days as a superhero, navigating the treacherous waters of being a teenager with newfound superpowers. But it wasn't until the fifth episode of Invincible that our high school principal, Mr. Winslow, made his entrance into the story. Mark Grayson, our teenage hero in the making, is strolling through the hallowed halls of his school when he suddenly stopped in his tracks by Mr. Winslow. The casting for Mr. Winslow is an Easter egg in and of itself. You see, Reginald Vell Johnson, the actor who portrays our beloved principal, has quite the connection to the high school he oversees. The high school is none other than Reginald Vell Johnson High School. Talk about life imitating art. <laughs> and if that weren't enough, Mr. Winslow's name, B.N. Winslow, is a clever nod to the iconic Reginald Vell Johnson's role in the classic TV series, Family Matters. It's like the creators of Invincible decided to sprinkle a little pop culture magic into the mix, just for us. Derek Sanders You see, Derek was one of those unfortunate souls who disappeared into thin air along with David Hines' bomb project. But what sets Derek apart from the crowd? Well, let me tell you. It's all about those nifty mechanical implants and enhancements. Now, it's worth mentioning that we never actually see Derek donning a spandex suit and fighting crime with his mechanical wizardry. But that doesn't mean he's just your average Joe. Derek is packing some serious punch. There's a scene in Invincible No. 14 where Derek, in all his enhanced glory, effortlessly lifts not one but two high school age boys off the ground with just a single hand each. But before he unveiled his jaw-dropping strength, Derek found himself in a bit of a tussle with some less-than-friendly classmates. Well, in a moment of sheer determination and, huh, let's be honest, a touch of vengeance, Derek stood up to them. Don't worry, he didn't unleash any life-altering injuries or go all supervillain on them. He simply showed them that he's not one to be messed with. Mighty Man Mighty Man was crafted for one noble purpose, to take on the forces of evil and give them a run for the money. When it's time for some super-powered action, the chosen host, regardless of their gender, can transform into a strapping, tall, and decidedly blonde gentleman. Just imagine it. You tap your wrists together and voila! You're now a bona fide superhero with a dazzling array of godlike abilities. Flight, check. Incredible strength, double check. But this fantastic form isn't something that can be kept up indefinitely. No, our mighty man has to revert back to good old human form to catch some Z's and enjoy a hearty meal to keep the energy levels up. 
Now, if you're getting a sense of déjà vu, eh, you're not alone. Mighty Man definitely takes a page out of Captain Marvel's playbook, and the creator of this character, well, let's just say they were and still are a massive fan of Captain Marvel. It's a loving homage to a classic superhero with a few unique twists thrown in for good measure. But what's a superhero without some enemies, right? Mighty Man's rogues galleries include some oh-so-familiar faces like Mr. Mind, who goes by the sinister moniker The Wicked Worm, and Dr. Savannah, reincarnated as the nefarious Dr. Nirvana. Kursk. It all starts when Kursk has a run-in with the speedy sensation Red Rush. Now, Red Rush isn't your average speedster, and he makes quick work of Kursk, boiling his nefarious plans with a dash of style and a sprinkle of heroism. But the story takes an electrifying turn when he gets a summons from Isotope, who robs him into the chaotic world of Machine Head's machinations. That's not a job you can easily refuse, especially if you're in the business of villainy. With a group of villains at his side, Kursk is all set to take on one enemy, Invincible. The battle is on, and sparks fly as Kursk, along with his compatriot Magmaniac, takes on Invincible with all the electrifying power at his disposal. But even when Invincible finds himself caught in the clutches of Tether Tyrant, Kursk doesn't let up. He keeps the electricity flowing, zapping and shocking our hero until Mark does what any self-respecting superhero would do. He breaks free and sends Tyrant crashing into Kursk, creating a real shockwave of a showdown. Komodo Dragon Meet Iguana the reptilian enforcer who's got some serious claws to show off. This femme fatale is no ordinary agent. She's a key player in the Diabolical Lizard League's lineup, and she's not afraid to get her hands dirty, or should I say, her claws sharp. Iguana is a true pro when it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat and melee fighting. Whether she's slithering into action or pouncing on her enemies, she knows how to handle herself in a scaly showdown. She's not just a member of the League, she's one of their go-to superhuman enforcers, and that's no small feat. How Iguana got her powers is a mystery. It's like a secret recipe. Nobody knows the ingredients, but the results are undeniably impressive. Those razor-sharp claws aren't just for show. They're her secret weapon, and she wields them with finesse. Salamander Meet Salamander the small package with a big punch. When it comes to physical stature, Salamander may not be the most imposing figure on the block, but he more than makes up for it with his sheer tenacity and powers. Time and again. He's faced off against the likes of Invincible, Atom Eve, and Shapesmith. And the results? Hmm, let's just say it hasn't been pretty for our pint-sized reptilian friend. In fact, Salamander's life seems to be stuck in a never-ending cycle of incarceration and jail breaks. But don't let his prison record fool you. Salamander is not one to be underestimated. He's got some deadly tricks up his scaly sleeves. His toxic powers, sometimes referred to as acid spit, allow him to generate toxic substances from his body. Isotope Isotope, the teleporting marvel. Once just an ordinary human, he hit the superpower jackpot thanks to a little accident. Now, he's a key player in the world of supervillainy, working alongside the notorious Machine Head. You see, Isotope's job primarily revolves around being Machine Head's personal teleporter. Need to be somewhere in the blink of an eye? Whether it's a high-stakes heist or a visit to the Popsicle Palace, Isotope's your guy. When the chips are down and Machine Head needs some muscle, Isotope can work his teleportation magic to summon a crew of superpowered troublemakers. We're talking Battle Beast, Kursk, Magmaniac, Burnus, and Tether Tyrant. The whole shebang. He doesn't exactly get his hands dirty in the action, though. Isotope prefers to hang back, keeping a watchful eye on things while his boss works his villainous mojo. When the going gets tough and the fight gets hot, Isotope knows when to make his exit, and he does it with style. During a particularly heated showdown with Titan, Invincible and the gang, Isotope pulled a disappearing act. By the time Machine Head was ready to bail, Isotope was long gone, leaving his boss to fend for himself. Biplane Biplane was no ordinary crook. He was a mastermind who engineered heist after heist, targeting banks from the sky. With the winds as his allies and the city below as his playground, he left Denver in awe and law enforcement in disarray. A grim diagnosis revealed that Biplane had cancer, a deadly adversary far beyond any he'd faced before. Faced with his own mortality, he concocted a madman scheme that would plunge Denver into darkness. With chilling determination, Biplane encased himself in uranium, turning his very body into a doomsday device. His plan? To detonate, unleashing radioactive devastation upon the city that once revered him. Denver stood on the brink of catastrophe, with Biplane ready to push it over the edge. However, the immortal guardian of the city determined to stop this act of madness. The clash between hero and villain played out in the skies, and the immortal cast by plane into the abyss of space, extinguishing his nefarious intentions in an instant. Kill Cannon Meet Kill Cannon, the supervillain extraordinaire. The story begins with Kill Cannon in the midst of a bank heist, his laser cannon arm fully charged and ready for action. 
But as fate would have it, he crosses paths with a girl, a seemingly ordinary girl who, as it turns out, is anything but ordinary. With powers of her own, she stands her ground, facing down Kill Cannon with a level of success that leaves him near unscathed and, dare I say, a tad humbled. Fast forward a few years and Kill Cannon is back to his old tricks, causing mayhem and chaos wherever he goes. Months later, after some quality time behind bars, Kill Cannon is a free man. Once again, he's itching for a rematch, ready to take on Invincible, the hero who bested him before. But Kill Cannon, once feared supervillain, decides it's time to throw in the towel. He attempts to surrender to Invincible, looking for a peaceful resolution. However, our hero has other plans. In a swift and heavy finishing move, Invincible delivers a punch that sends Kill Cannon crashing into a wall, sealing the deal once and for all. Raw Face Raw Face is not your typical next-door neighbor. Unless your neighbor happens to be a woman with a wolf-like appearance who enjoys duking it out with superheroes. <laughs> One fateful day, Raw Face found herself in a showdown with Invincible. She lunged, hoping to sink her teeth or claws into him, but our fearless hero had other plans. With lightning-quick reflexes, Invincible seized Raw Face and launched her like a furry missile straight into the unforgiving walls of a nearby building. The impact left her unconscious, sprawled on the ground, a lupine visage temporarily silenced. Now, Raw Face is a bit of a mystery in the Invincible universe. You see, she's one of the rare characters specially cooked up for the show, so there isn't a wealth of backstory to dive into. But what we do know is this, Raw Face isn't your average gal. She's got the head of a wolf and the heart of a warrior, much like the classic trope of the werewolf. Rawface's powers come with a fair share of drawbacks. Her transformation isn't a choice, it's a curse she must endure. But Rawface is no damsel in distress. She's engineered a nifty collar that allows her body to maintain its human form while her head goes full wolf mode. It might not be a perfect solution, but it's a small victory in her ongoing battle with her inner beast. Rose. Alongside Kevin and several other families residing in the same block under Machine Head's iron fist, Rose found herself ensnared in a sinister plan to set their apartment complex ablaze, all in the name of insurance money. As Kevin confronted Titan, demanding to know why they were being subjected to this nightmare, Rose stood steadfastly by his side. She implored Kevin to let Titan be, her protective instincts kicking in. But Titan wasn't about to let the injustice stand. He approached Kevin, Rose, and the rest of the beleaguered families, offering them a glimmer of hope amidst the chaos. With a hint of compassion in his eyes, Titan informed them of a safe haven located at 3rd and Park Lake. He assured them that they'd have shelter for a few weeks and a bit of much-needed financial assistance. It was a lifeline, a chance for these innocent souls to escape the clutches of their tormentor, even if only temporarily. Later on, we find Rose seeking refuge at the Beckwell Community Center, a sanctuary for the homeless. Elias Brandyworth Elias Brandyworth, a character shrouded in intrigue and moral turmoil. You see, Samantha's origins are far from ordinary. She isn't the biological daughter of Adam and Betsy Wilkins, nor the result of a conventional childbirth. Instead, Samantha is the product of a secret government experiment, a genetic engineering endeavor that brought forth a select group of superpowered children nurtured within the womb of a homeless woman. Enter Dr. Elias Brandyworth. It was he who took on the role of the brilliant scientist behind this audacious project. However, as the story unfolds, we discover that Dr. Brandyworth was plagued by a profound moral dilemma. In an act of unexpected compassion, Dr. Brandyworth stepped in and rescued the homeless woman from her dire circumstances before she could give birth to Samantha. Gravitator Chris had a singular goal in mind to procure enough money to purchase that perfect engagement ring for his beloved girlfriend. Love can indeed drive people to some unusual lengths, even the path of villainy. But as fate would have it, Chris's criminal endeavors took an unexpected turn when he crossed paths with Invincible. It didn't take a genius to realize that this was no equal matchup. Instead of resisting capture, Chris willingly turned himself in, realizing the futility of his situation. However, our heroic Invincible, known for his keen sense of potential, saw something more in Chris. Invincible recognized Chris's hidden talents and inventive genius. In a surprising twist, the hero extended an olive branch, offering Chris an alternative path. Rather than languishing in the clutches of the law, Chris was given an opportunity to use his remarkable inventions for the greater good, working alongside the government. Supervision, a heroine with a story as dynamic as her powers. Born Bridget Flynn, she's a prominent member of the superhero ensemble known as Dynamo 5. But how did this all come to be? It all started with the tragic assassination of Captain Dynamo, a hero who met his untimely demise. In the aftermath, his widow Maddie Warner unearthed shocking secrets. Captain Dynamo had been living a double life, one marked by infidelity. This revelation spurred Maddie into action, 
realizing that Tower City was in dire need of a new guardian. With keen investigative prowess, Maddie identified five potential offspring of Dynamo himself. In an act of extraordinary determination, she subjected these chosen individuals to radiation exposure, bestowing upon them powers reminiscent of their late father. Among these extraordinary children was Bridget Flynn, who found herself gifted with superhuman strength. Standing shoulder to shoulder with her newfound siblings, Bridget took on the noble responsibility of safeguarding Tower City. Now, Bridget Flynn, known as Supervision, wields these vision-related superhuman abilities with remarkable prowess. She boasts the incredible gift of X-ray vision and telescopic vision, enabling her to see the world in ways most could only dream of. Furthermore, she's armed with the formidable power of laser vision. Giant the Giant, whose tale unfolds in the pages of Invincible Comics. This colossal character is no ordinary kaiju. Once, in a time before enchantment, the Giant was a simple eight-year-old boy. His life took a fateful turn when he and his grandmother stumbled upon a mystical portal that whisked them away to an alternate dimension, another worldly realm beyond imagination. In this strange land, a cruel wizard saw potential in the young boy and decided to bind him to his will intending to wield him as a fearsome weapon against his enemies. Little did the wizard know that he'd gravely underestimated the fiery and rebellious spirit that often dwells within human tweens. The giant, now under the influence of the wizard's enchantment, refused to be a mere pawn in this sinister game. Instead, he erupted into a rampage, striking terror into the hearts of all who crossed his path. With fearless determination, he seized control of this enchanted realm, declaring himself its undisputed ruler. Under the giant's reign, a land bore witness to a harsh and oppressive rule, marked by his cruel and unyielding fist of authority. But what truly sets the giant apart is his physical prowess. Possessing superhuman strength that rivals even the mightiest of Viltramites, he wields the power to lift hundreds of thousands of tons with sinews of unmatched might. His sheer size and cyclopean form also grant him an incredible resilience, making him nigh invulnerable to harm. Universa Universa, hailing from a distant and enigmatic world beyond our reach. Her journey has taken her across vast cosmic expanses to our humble planet Earth, driven by an unrelenting quest for one precious resource, energy. One fateful day, Universe's relentless pursuit of energy led her to a daring attack on a power plant, a move that caught the attention of Invincible, the valiant defender of Earth. With determination in her heart, Universa refused to yield, and a fierce clash ensued as the two mighty beings clashed in a battle of titans. In the end, victory favored Invincible, and Universa found herself imprisoned within the confines of Stronghold Penitentiary, under the watchful eye of Cecil Stedman. However, Invincible, in his unwavering quest for self-improvement, decided to visit Universa in her confinement. There, amidst the cold and sterile surroundings of the prison, they engaged in a candid and heartfelt conversation, bridging the gap between their differing perspectives and personal challenges. Invincible pulled strings to secure Universa's freedom and ensure her access to the energy she so desperately sought for her people. Having achieved her mission, Universa bid farewell to Earth, her brief but impactful journey leaving an indelible mark on the hearts of those she encountered. Octoboss Octoboss a fraudster of the deep alongside his loyal Squidman minions. Let's rewind the reel a bit, shall we? You see, Octoboss and his trusty Squidmen weren't always wreaking havoc on our planet. No, they were originally exiled criminals from a whole other world. Their unfortunate voyage led them to an unintended crash landing right here on Earth's doorstep. It didn't take long for Octoboss to seize control of the Squidmen and set them on a path of mischief. Throughout the years, this aquatic gang made repeated attempts to swipe plutonium, and as you might guess, that didn't sit well with Earth's valiant heroes. Oh, they've had their fair share of defeats, make no mistake, but don't discount them just yet. But they've also had their moments of triumph. Now, if you're wondering about their latest escapade, it involved a showdown with the youthful heroes Rexplode and Invincible at a nuclear reactor. Those slippery devils managed to slip through the fingers of justice, escaping custody and leaving heroes scratching their heads. As for Octoboss himself, he's no pushover. He wields immense strength, capable of dishing out punishment that'll make your head spin. His resilience to physical harm is off the charts, with a body tough enough to laugh off explosive blasts that could rival a hefty 10 pounds of TNT, going off just one foot away. Slaying Mantis This Guardian of Justice sports a high-powered battle suit that's nothing short of spectacular. A suit equipped with a dynamic duo of energy blades, capable of slicing through darn near anything that stands in their way. That's not all. This extraordinary suit has yet another trick. It can conjure powerful energy blasts that pack a punch. When the going gets tough, our hero can unleash these devastating blasts, leaving villains scrambling for cover. Haluma, Haluma, mysterious as the depths of the cosmic void, has left us intrigued and curious. What's the deal with this mysterious character, you ask? Well, let me tell you. Now, I'll be honest with you folks, we don't know a whole lot about Haluma. In fact, her existence in the comic book realm is shrouded in more secrecy than a superhero secret identity. 
But what we do know is that she's the girlfriend of neither than Oliver Grayson, the man with the superhero pedigree. You might think dating a superhero comes with its perks, flying dates, superpowered picnics and romantic rescues. But with Haluma, it's all a mystery. Does she have her own superpowers? Is she a secret hero lurking in the shadows? Or perhaps she's the calming anchor to Oliver's heroic storm. One thing's for sure, their relationship is a cosmic secret waiting to be unraveled. Super Patriot Meet Johnny Armstrong, the American hero straight out of the pages of comic book history. World War II, a time of great peril and even greater heroes. Johnny, just a regular soldier, finds himself captured by those dastardly Nazis, but they didn't know who they were messing with. The Nazis, in their mad quest for power, turned Johnny into a guinea pig for their twisted experiments. Lo and behold, Johnny emerged with superhuman powers that would make Captain America do a double take. Now, what does any self-respecting super soldier do after gaining incredible abilities? Well, Johnny did what any true patriot would do. He demolished the very base where they turned him into a super freak. Johnny then suited up in a costume that screamed Marika, decked out in good old stars and stripes. Super Patriot was born, and he was ready to defend freedom, justice, and all that good stuff. But Super Patriot wasn't just a one-man show. He teamed up with a bunch of other super-powered folks and formed a squad known as the Allies. Supreme, Mighty Man, and a bunch of other heroes joined the party. Now, let's talk power, shall we? Superhuman strength, check. Regenerative powers, you got it. Telescopic and microscopic vision, in the bag. Decelerated aging, yeah. The guy doesn't age like regular folks. Flight, of course, he's soaring through the skies. And as if that wasn't enough, his cyborg limbs can morph into all sorts of crazy weaponry. But don't forget the basics. Johnny's got military training and marksmanship skills that would make even Hawkeye nod in approval. Flaxen Leader Once upon a cosmic escapade, the Flaxen Leader was just your everyday Flaxen soldier. You see, these Flaxens had this itch for Earth and decided to pay us a not-so-friendly visit. The first time around, our dear leader was just a grunt in the ranks. But oh boy, did things escalate quickly. Not content with a single invasion attempt, the Flaxen leader ended up spearheading not one, but two more invasions. Now let's get to the nitty gritty. This Flaxen leader wasn't your typical alien. He was ruthless, sadistic, and had a grin that could send shivers down your spine. But hey, it wasn't all about cold-blooded villainy. Our leader was also a tactical genius, the mastermind behind the Flaxen's intricate battle plans. He knew how to coordinate his troops like a symphony conductor. And guess what? It had the lowdown on our beloved heroes, the Teen Team and good old Invincible. Now let's talk hardware. During the third invasion, our Flaxen leader hopped into a massive mech suit. We're talking colossal size, super strength and lightning fast speed. This suit packed a punch all right. It even made Invincible bleed, which is no small feat, let me tell ya. The Flaxen leader's legacy was sealed when Omni-Man, in a fit of vengeance, decided to follow these Flaxens back to their home dimension. Long story short, Omni-Man decimated the place and our leader was no more. Furnace Once upon a time, Furnace wasn't much more than a small cog in the mercenary machine. He teamed up with a bunch of other ne'er-do-wells and pulled off some jobs that paid the bills. But you know how it goes? Ambition creeps in like a mosquito at a picnic. Eventually, Furness saw a glimmer of potential profit and decided to go solo. Enter Invincible, a young Viltramite hero with a habit of crushing villainous get-togethers. Furnace's solo gig was cut short when he crossed paths with this fiery protagonist. <laughs> when I say fiery, I mean it, quite literally. You see, Furnace isn't a human. He's a humanoid column of magma, a walking, talking volcano with a bad attitude. His body is like molten lava, and it glows from within. As he moves, his form pulses and glowing globs of plasma flake off him like sparks from a campfire. Now, don't let his rocky exterior fool you. Beneath that fiery facade, Furnace has the strength of a regular human. His suit of armor, though, takes him from average Joe to superhuman in the strength department. He can lift a whopping one ton overhead like it's a walk in the park. But Furnace isn't just brawn, he's got brains to match. This guy's as sharp as a tack and has a knack for engineering. So, while his mercenary career might be a roller coaster, at least he's got the smarts to keep things interesting. Flaxons, the Flaxons, those interdimensional troublemakers who just couldn't resist a good old invasion of our beloved Earth. Three times, yes, count them, three times these Flaxons decided to crash our party through a portal they whipped up themselves. And what did they bring with them? Chaos, chaos, and more chaos. They had their sights set on conquering our planet and wiping out us humans. Now, enter our heroes, the ones who have got our backs when things go haywire. At the forefront of the battle, you had Invincible. He wasn't about to let these interdimensional bullies have their way. Oh, oh. But he wasn't alone in this cosmic showdown. Atom Eve, with her powers of matter manipulation, lent a hand by deflecting laser beams from tanks like she was playing a game of ping pong. And let's not forget the teen team, a bunch of young guns ready to take on the worst the multiverse could throw at them. 
You see, time flows differently in the Flaxen's neck of the woods. A few minutes on Earth, well, that's like years for them. As you can imagine, this rapid aging was no walk in the park for the Flaxen's. Many of them started dropping like flies, turning into wrinkled old relics. It wasn't long before they decided to cut their losses and bolted back through their portal, probably to find a better timeline to mess with. Marvelous verdict. In Invincible, a dynamic and multifaceted range of characters are on display, each contributing their own unique elements to the complex world created by Robert Kirkman. From the titular character, Mark Grayson, Invincible, whose journey from an ordinary teenager to a formidable superhero serves as the central narrative to his father, Nolan, Omni-Man, whose morally conflicting choices spark a major conflict in the story. The character development is compelling and thought-provoking. The supporting cast is equally engaging, with memorable figures like Atom Eve and Cecil Stedman. The villains and anti-hero showcase the multifaceted nature of morality and ethics in this superhero world. Invincible doesn't shy away from exploring the human aspects of his characters, providing relatable motivations, vulnerabilities, and growth. The interplay of powers, relationships, and ethical dynamics makes for a rich, character-driven narrative that's both entertaining and thought-provoking. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. Lost Boy Scout. I said enough!